lecturers are providing at different campuses. I'm very hopeful that the students will have a great career ahead and will get the best quality education. Jim's Kalkaji was founded in the year 1997 for imparting high quality education in the field of management. Since then, it has been consistently ranked and awarded as one of the top B schools in India. Jim's Kalkaji is ranked as one of the top 30 business schools in the country. As regards our recent rankings, the prestigious Times of India, they have ranked us as the 14th best business school in North Zone. The NHRD National Network, they have ranked us as the 6th best business school in the country in terms of leadership and governance. Our world-class curriculum, our faculty, our tie-ups with industry, companies such as KPMG and ICICI, and national organizations such as the PhD Chamber of Commerce and Industry, National Entrepreneurship Network, and the ISTD. We have tie-ups with the MDIS in Singapore and Greenwich Universities in UK. We also publish the ATM Journal, which is a very prestigious journal in management. It attracts reputed members of academia as well as the corporates. The flagship program of Jim's Kalkaji is the AICTE approved postgraduate diploma in management and international business with specialization in marketing finance and human resources. PGTN has been granted equivalence with MBA by the Association of Indian Universities, New Delhi. PGTM's comprehensive curriculum includes personality development with on-the-job training, mind-boggling case studies, presentations, foreign language, and exposure to national and international conferences, etc. During the course of the program, a foreign visit is organized by the Institute. Also, as an integral part of the curriculum, Eight weeks of summer internship in a suitable company is provided to expose the student to practical business situations. I'm Ritika Srivastava and I'm pursuing PGDM in international business from Jim's Kalkaji. I chose this college because of its excellent placement quality and its superior reputation. The faculty at Jim's is very supportive and interactive in their nature. Jim's Kalkaji offers a plethora of learning opportunities to grow and to discover yourself. So, if you have dreams, then Jim's is the place to be. Jim's Kalkaji has been the strongest block in the building of my career. From looking like corporates to acting like one, Jim's Kalkaji not only focuses on this, but also gives a chance to every student to bring the best of their personalities. To break the monotony of the class and studies, the Institute organizes seminars, workshops and symposia at regular intervals. Eminent personalities from corporate and media world like Mr. Arun Jaitley, Mrs. Karina Kapoor Khan, Ms. Rajni Abbey, Mrs. Sheila Dikshit have taken out time to interact with the students. The placement cell of gyms has affluent tie-ups to help its students in making a cut to the job in the business world. Our students have been placed in the most reputed companies such as RBS, KPMG, Deloitte, Hevels, Nestle, VIP, ITC, Nokri.com, HDFC Assets Management Company, and so on. Alumni have certainly done us proud in the corporate world. My name is Nikhil Mehta. Jims has groomed us through mentorship, live projects and various other corporate activities and prepared us for the final placements. I have been recruited with CBI, which is the world's largest real estate advisory. I thanks Jims for the huge support and guidance throughout and making this journey a remarkable. Good morning all. Good morning all. Good morning. Yeah. 
remarkable one. GEMS ensures growth in all the aspects. The most awaited Kshitaj Dandia Knight showcases the talent of dance floor and ramp. GEMS has been actively involved in various corporate social responsibility activities. Our focus areas are healthcare, education, sustainable livelihood, infrastructure and espousing social causes. At GEMS, we truly believe that learning is a lifelong adventure that begins with the discovery of students' talents. GEMS is life for me. GEMS means quality. GEMS means confidence. GEMS is transformation for me. GEMS is better for me. As the world revolves, we evolve at GEMS. Yes. Jagannath International Management School is an educational landmark of Delhi. Established in the year 1993 with mission to nurture professionals and ultimate achievers, GEMS functions under the aegis of the Jagannath Gupta Memorial Educational Society. The society has already set up high-quality educational institutions. These include GEMS campuses at Kalkaji, Vasant Kunj, Lajpat Nagar, Greater Noida, Rohini, and Engineering College in Jaipur, and Jagannath University, Bahadurgarh, and Jaipur to facilitate learning in the knowledge millennium. All the campuses are Wi Fi enabled, well equipped with LCDs, overhead projectors, air conditioned classrooms, up to date computer labs well-stocked libraries and aesthetically designed auditoriums. GEMS has won many third-party accreditations and approvals. It is a pleasure and honor for me to be associated with GEMS for the last few years. GEMS is one of the finest educational institutions now in India. It is providing higher education, especially the management education to hundreds and thousands of students. GEMS is much in demand with the graduates who are wanting to make their careers in taking, by taking management education at GEMS. I've always found in my interactions with the faculty that the faculty is very focused, they're very sincere, very dedicated. What is more uh, important for me to see is that the management of the gyms led by Dr. Amit Gupta uh, uh, is, is everybody always there, looking the at what can be done for betterment of the education on my screen, in the institution. Please. I wish gyms the best in the years to come. Hello. The credit for this superlative success goes to... Uh, this Jyoti again is doing the same thing all over again, what she did. To its young, dynamic and visionary chairman, Dr. Amit Gupta. I'm happy to share that we have more than 12,000 students starting across various campuses of gyms. We also established a private state university at Jaipur and at Bhattupur. I also feel that global competition would be there in education as well like all other sectors. So gyms has already tied up with different universities including Cologne University of Germany, 
Westminster University of UK and Deakins University of Australia. These diets have ensured that our students get global exposure and actually get to know the nuances of the different cultures across the globe. We also have a vision in the long run to start a medical university and the kind of leadership our faculty and our directors are providing at different campuses. I'm very hopeful that the students will have a great career ahead and will get the best quality education. Jim's Kalkaji was founded in the year 1997 for imparting high quality education in the field of management. Since then, it has been consistently ranked and awarded as one of the top B schools in India. Jim Skalkaji is ranked as one of the top 30 business schools in the country. As regards our recent rankings, the prestigious Times of India, they have ranked us as the 14th best business school in North Zone. The NHRD National Network, they have ranked us as the 6th best business school in the country in terms of leadership and governance. Our world-class curriculum, our faculty, our tie-ups with industry, companies such as KPMG and ICICI, and national organizations such as the PhD Chamber of Commerce and Industry, National Entrepreneurship Network, and the ISTD. We have tie-ups with the MDIS in Singapore and Greenwich Universities in UK. We also publish the ATEM Journal, which is a very prestigious journal in management. It attracts reputed members of academia as well as the corporates. The flagship program of Jim's Kalkaji is the AICTE approved postgraduate diploma in management and international business with specialization in marketing finance and human resources. PGTM has been granted equivalence with MBA by the Association of Indian Universities, New Delhi. PGTM's comprehensive curriculum includes personality development with on-the-job training, mind-boggling case studies, presentations, foreign language, and exposure to national and international conferences, etc. During the course of the program, a foreign visit is organized by the Institute. Also, as an integral part of the curriculum, Eight weeks of summer internship in a suitable company is provided to expose the student to practical business situations. I'm Ritika Srivastava and I'm pursuing PGDM in international business from Jim's Kalkaji. I chose this college because of its excellent placement quality and its superior reputation. The faculty at Jim's is very supportive and interactive in their nature. Jim's Kalkaji offers a plethora of learning opportunities to grow and to discover yourself. So, if you have dreams, then Jim's is the place to be. Jim's Kalkaji has been the strongest block in the building of my career. From looking like corporates to acting like one, Jim's Kalkaji not only focuses on this, but also gives a chance to every student to bring the best of their personalities. To break the monotony of the class and studies, the Institute organizes seminars, workshops and symposia at regular intervals. Eminent personalities from corporate and media <coughs> world like Mr. Arun Jaitley, Mrs. Karina Kapoor Khan, Ms. Rajni Abbey, Mrs. Sheila Dikshit have taken out time to interact with the students. The placement cell of gyms has affluent tie-ups to help its students in making a cut to the job in the business world. Our students have been placed in the most reputed companies such as RBS, KPMG, Deloitte, Hevels, Nestle, VIP, ITC, Nokri.com, HDFC Assets Management Company, and so on. Alumni have certainly done us proud in the corporate world. My name is Nikhil Mehta. Jims has groomed us through mentorship, live projects and various other corporate activities and prepared us for the final placements. I have been recruited with CBI, which is the world's largest real estate advisory. I thank Jims 
for the huge support and guidance throughout and making this journey a remarkable one. GEMS ensures growth in all the aspects. The most awaited Shitaj Dandia Knight showcases the talent of dance floor and rap. GEMS has been actively involved in various corporate social responsibility activities. Our focus areas are healthcare, education, sustainable livelihood, infrastructure and espousing social causes. At GEMS, we truly believe that learning is a lifelong adventure that begins with the discovery of students' talents. GEMS is life for me. GEMS means quality. GEMS means confidence. GEMS is transformation for me. GEMS is better tomorrow. As the world revolves, we evolve at GEMS. Jyoti, shall we start? Yes, sir. Uh, just a moment. A very pleasant morning to you all. Today, I, Jyoti Kukreja, on behalf of Jagannath International Management School, Kalkaji, which is celebrating the Silver Jubilee this year, is very proud and honored to have the Galaxy of Experts to enlighten our students onto the theme of Marketing Trends 2025. Customers who were purchasing from me retail now want the minutest details. The ones who wanted more now do not want only more, but also pure. The ones who were wealthy now are working their, working their way out to be healthy. From those digital payments to those loyalty cards, the e-wallet is heaviest of all. So with so many buzzwords of the cybersecurity and data privacy going around, how many of us are not confused for the marketing trends 2025 wherein your career landscape is so much confused? So let's look forward to the galaxy of experts who are going to offer their insights to all of us. With this, I am not going to waste any more moment, but I'm going to call upon Dr. Commander Satish said, sir, to this national marketing seminar. And um, may I take this humble opportunity of introducing sir to you all. So the issues and challenges of this marketing world, which is getting bigger and fierce, I take this humble opportunity of introducing Dr. Commander Satish Seth, sir, who is the advisor to Chairman, sir, uh, Jim Skalkaji at the moment. Sir is a postgraduate mechanical engineer with an MBA from FMS, Delhi University. His prestigious doctorate degree in the field of organizational behavior has been coming from the world of IMA, Institution of Engineers, and Institute of Marine Engineers. With such insights, under his stewardship, Jim Skalkaji has ascended new heights and is today recognized as an Institute of Excellence, which is, uh, which is renowned for its robust partnerships with both industry and academia, and not only at the national level, but at the global level as well. An HR and strategic specialist to the core, he has many research papers and book publications to his credit. Well renowned as a paper reviewer for Emerald Group Publishing, an accredited corporate trainer with the PhD Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Sir is also working as an advisor to the International Education Group Eureka based on Dubai. With not taking any more moments between you and him, may I please call upon Sir to deliver a welcome address to all our experts. Thank you, Jyoti. Good morning. At the outset, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to our distinguished guests for the inaugural session. Uh, Mr. Sujoy Chaudhary, Mr. Rajiv Gupta, Mr. Anurag Mathur, and uh, Mr. Pankaj Dubey, if he's joined in. I also warmly welcome all distinguished speakers who will be participating in the subsequent sessions the panel discussions. Director gyms, faculty members, their students, and all participants. 
thank you for being here today to support us in a very key event gems annual marketing seminar the topic being marketing 2025 issues challenges and strategies today's seminar theme is most topical as businesses today are looking ahead they are mulling over the future as to what marketing will look like in 2025 post covid to predict the trends that will define marketing in 2025 is no easy task and most experts would be wary to take that plunge a top us marketing research firm marketo they have conducted a survey just to get, uh, just to gather an idea as to what marketing will look like in 2025 i'll just very briefly touch on their findings three areas kpis skills and technology as regards kpis the survey reveals that today the top three key performance indicators for marketing are customer retention lead generation and customer lifetime value it is predicted that by 2025 marketers expect customer retention to drop to second place lead generation to drop to sixth and customer lifetime value will be the main kpi in 2025 in terms of skills huge changes are predicted in the area of marketing skills marketing will become a technology hub and in demand skills will cover analytics data insights customer experience user experience and machine learning just to name a few the fastest growing skills in terms of expected importance are artificial intelligence and neuromarketing today 6% of marketers say they need artificial intelligence capabilities for machine learning but in 2025 it could go as high as 60% neuromarketing too leaps on the same scale from 8 to 52% today 8% marketers say that they need neuromarketing but it's predicted that by 2025 almost 52% will be needing to make use of neuromarketing sophisticated data analytics which is the foundational technology behind these two trends of artificial intelligence and neuromarketing well it is predicted that data analytics will be the most important skill in the marketing team in 2025 that's according to most respondents on the other hand generalist marketing skills are expected to fall entirely out of fashion today 65% of those uh, surveyed the respondents they list general marketing skills that the team has as extremely important but only 30% 13% believe it will be one of the most important in 2025 coming to technology today's top 3 tools used by marketers are email marketing social media marketing and crm customer relations management none of these make 2025's expected top 3 in fact the dream technology stack of 2025 would be something like data analytics and visualization artificial intelligence and machine learning which is for content delivery and customer experience management as per the survey crm fell to fifth place while email and social media marketing did not make the top 10 email and social media marketing it is said will still form part of this dream mix but marketers predict it will be led by artificial intelligence advanced micro segmentation virtual reality and 
chatbots are also on the rise. Uh, well, this is one survey. I'm sure there are others and the finding may be equally interesting and perhaps a little uh, different from what uh, Marketo has uh, you know, uh, published as, as far as its survey is concerned. But uh, in the end, I would only like to say, in fact, it would be fair to say that machine learning and artificial intelligence will undoubtedly be growth areas. Uh, they are unlikely to replace email and social media marketing. At best, they will probably enhance them. Uh, with these uh, few thoughts, uh, I think uh, it's time the uh, experts uh, would take over and, uh, uh, and uh, reveal uh, more of uh, insight to you on the subject. There are many more sessions after the inaugural session, the panel discussions, et cetera. And I'm sure at the end of it all, when we do leave, uh, you know, this uh, forum today, uh, we'll be far more knowledgeable and uh, far more enriched. Uh, thank you very much. I wish the seminar all the success. Well, thank you so much, sir, for your thought-provoking words here. It has really set the door open for discussion among the panel of experts who are going to brainstorm our students with the much-needed marketing insights. Well, truly, sir, you mentioned artificial intelligence and neurosciences. In fact, neuromarketing are going to make an impact on machine learning and upon the digital learning and the customer experience. Let's see all these trends. How would they influence the world of marketing, especially in the domain of retail? So let me take you ahead into introducing our very first guest for the day, Mr. Anurag Sharma, sir, who is vice president at Clarks. I take this humble opportunity of introducing him to you all. Sir is a business head with Rockport with PNL responsibility. Well, we all know that cash is the king, but customers come like queens. They need to be pampered. That emotional intelligence really makes an impact when we talk about the influence into having that cognitive intelligence. Well, his specialities run across the cross-functional domains in the areas of brand management, product management, and retail management. But with so much accountability and responsibility, he has number of experience in the industry. Well, what more to say? May I please call upon Sir to share his wealth of knowledge with all of us. Over to you, Sir. Just Good morning, everyone. Is, am I visible to all? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, you're visible. Yeah, that's great. Excellent. It's a pleasure to be back again at Jim's. Uh, probably it's the first interaction that we're having uh, online. So, uh, you know, kind of a different uh, way of interacting with all of you. It's been uh, a journey that I've had uh, cherished for many, many years. And uh, I've had the pleasure of uh, being part of the Jim's family over the last couple of years. Uh, you know, it's the COVID scenario that has changed the way we are interacting today. And uh, I'm sure uh, the session today would be as meaningful as uh, the start has been. And uh, uh, by the end of it, uh, we'll have uh, something more to say. Uh, so uh, she has already given uh, a, you know, a complete brief as to what I've been doing over the years. I represent uh, sales. Uh, uh, I take care of the sales function at Clark's uh, today. I've had uh, uh, the experience of working uh, across uh, various brands uh, in the past, right from uh, IDC to uh, working for Lee and the Reebok family for many years across functions. So today coming on uh, uh, to discussing about the session under discussion, which is on the marketing piece of issues and challenges and how things will evolve. Uh, Dr. Commander Said has already set the platform pretty well in terms of how things would evolve and there's no denial to the fact it will be a changed scenario from what we're seeing today and uh, uh, we've already seen the uh, changeover in the last one year probably that was not a planned changeover but a push changeover from what uh, the COVID did none of us were really prepared as to what would be in store for us none of us were preparing our marketing plans around it but it was uh, 
covid which uh, set the ball rolling and told all of us to stop and think differently uh, we did not uh, really uh, think from the perspective uh, well it started two three months we were all scratching our heads and saying uh, what the hell is happening around us and uh, gradually we moved ourselves into uh, taking things uh, on a different note so you know i can keep talking about that front but uh, let's come to the subject uh, before uh, you know let me just uh, share the screen with you all and uh, let's start on the presentation uh, one second so shall we share it for you well well before we start looking at how the marketing would look like in times to come it is imperative to understand how will the business world evolve by 2025 because that is something which would uh, drive uh, the change over on the marketing stand uh, stand on this on the marketing side because till the time the business is sorted and the business requirement is clearly defined it will not be possible for the marketers to put together their marketing heads to so the drivers of change in the year 2025 i'm sure there is uh, you know quite a bit of information flooded all across the internet in terms of uh, how the information would evolve how we what we can do what has been done etc cetera, etc cetera. but uh, the imperatives would be it is not about uh, you know working in different stylos it is not about you know working uh, in different countries etc it is about working cohesively the three main drivers that we see in terms of 2025 would be it is about shifting away from the geographies the industry boundaries etc would change completely and it will be a changed digital world that is what we see by the time 2025 comes because it is all about moving ahead in the direction the world is going so it is <clears throat> while we uh, you know looking at uh, growth per se it is going to be driven largely from the way we evolve ourselves from here so when we look at how do we evolve in terms of uh, uh, putting these three pieces together now the question is which country which region will drive global economic growth will it be india doing the trick or china doing the trick or will it be a combi combi combination of both or will it be western world will it be the internet flow that will uh, you know regulate the way the, we are looking at business will regulation create framework to cope with disruptiveness you know would customers be willing to share data the the acceptance of uh, sharing data would be the change norm these things are you know time and again hitting the business world and saying that how should we do it because in case you are not receptive to all these changes the customers will uh, push you to a scenario wherein you were had not looked at i'm sure most of you would have seen the offline world brands and so was our brand as well during the covid times resorting to the online medium to look at uh, reaching out to the customers i'm sure quite a few luxury brands uh, uh, you know for people who uh, buy luxury brands have looked at integrating their offline and online experience through engagement processes and that has been the way businesses have evolved in the last uh, uh, one year and which is you know you had never imagined that luxury brands would uh, give an experience through an online platform the way they have been doing over the last one year but do you think the conversation is as simple as just selling a product and online no it has to be a lot of a cusp between science and technology which has to evolve and yes building trust drivers to future growth in terms of social environment the way we seeing it the global geopolitical stability openness and international cooperation data flows cyber security internet regulation these would be the major drivers for future growth when you looking at business landscape digital disruptors are challenged by consumers lack of trust in online services because a lot of times the customers are not very uh, happy sharing their data online because uh, there have been instances wherein uh, you know people have moved out 
because they are not happy and they are happy to go back to the conventional way of uh, doing business. Small and large companies team together to form consortiums to offer digitally secured services through platforms. So the marketing working budget for a small size company to a large size company could be different and the return on investments could also be different. But these things uh, would definitely pave way for the future growth because they have to integrate somewhere and look at uh, formulating uh, future strategies. Now, business friendly regulations have to be built in in order to take the conversation forward because it cannot be just customer centric. It has to be both ways. Now, consumer engagement. We've heard a lot about it. Consumers are disillusioned by internet. Cost of being on online are higher than the benefits. Consumers companies value privacy and security first when and how to connect. If uh, you know, every time you go online, you're being questioned that you're trying to get into the privacy of the customer. How do we work out? And innovation becomes very important in such a scenario. With this as a background, it becomes uh, very, very difficult for uh, you know, business plans to be projected, things to be worked on uh, for, from the business standpoint to say, how do we take the conversation forward if there is so much of ambiguity around us? Now, the key challenge is uh, that in a current scenario that we face is how do we put the strategic vision in place? How do we master the customer relationship? The cyber crimes are adding on a daily basis. You know, the number of, uh, uh, you know, 48% of mobile app users would limit their use of apps unless they felt sure their personal information is being safeguarded. People are not very receptive to it. I'm sure you must have seen that in the last uh, year or so, the Facebook profiles have got logged. Earlier, it was not so. You know, the getting access to anybody's Facebook or social media platform was relatively easy. Now, adopting technology built by marketeers for marketeers, measuring ROI, these are very, very mundane words, but they carry a lot of meaning because till the time you are not able to put together your thoughts together on these five challenges, you know, putting the journey together for the next five years would be extremely difficult. Marketeers struggle in terms of putting the ROI benchmark in place. You might have spent hypothetically $1 million into, in terms of putting the uh, marketing working budget, but you really do not know what percentage of that would be the really meaningful one. Because has the, has the customer reached your uh, online platform? Has he viewed it? Has he seen it? Has he liked it? Or and has he actually spent money in terms of converting to a meaningful customer for you? It still remains a question. And these, with these challenges, we move on to looking at how the world is evolving. Now, we have had a similar situation with respect to, uh, you know, looking at how uh, to cater to it. In the earlier world, we used to have uh, uh, what do you call um, sure count as one of uh, the measuring tool to look at uh, uh, how many customers were walking into the stores. And we would, at the end of the day, figure out uh, that the number of customers walk-in was pretty high to the number of uh, customers actually buying it. And we used to say the conversion is an issue here. Later on, we were approached by one of the uh, leading uh, uh, firms, which uh, basically takes care of uh, this function through an AI integration. And they sold the idea of uh, using their facility. And they have a tool called Visitor Metrics which is powered by computer vision and machine, which is basically an AI integration, which allowed us to not just look at efficiency improvement, but tracking the customers correctly. And we were able to get a lesser footfall during that period of time because it was a artificial intelligence built-in tool and which allowed us to track the customers correctly. And we were able to record an increase in the conversions because what we were recording earlier was not the correct way of doing it. And this is, you know, very aptly uh, depicted in this uh, visual while we saying conventional camera versus an integrated camera. So while we are saying this is one way, you know, it, it, the conversation has already started in terms of uh, saying that artificial intelligence <coughs> is going to drive the future course of business. It might, might be at its infancy, but yes, it is where the world is going to take forward. There would be hardly any uh, brand for that matter, any company for that matter, which would not be using the interface of uh, artificial intelligence over a period of time. In the retail world, it is not so uh, uh, 
so much used as of now, except for the online space with the likes of uh, <clears throat> what you call Amazon, Flipkart, Mintra, etc., using it to a large extent. But the offline world is still, uh, you know, kind of away from uh, uh, using such tools. But there is, I don't think there is any choice for any of these brands to build their marketing strategy without the use of uh, any of such tools. Now, the companies that are already using neuromarketing, Dr. Sayed has uh, already mentioned, neuromarketing is what uh, would drive the future course of business. There are a lot of concerted studies already around it. The fact is, the today's brand marketeers are not looking at, uh, you know, just a footfall or having a product storytelling session with a customer. They are looking at what is going behind the customer's mind. How is he going to behave on a particular color? How is he going to behave to a particular situation? And trying to map through, uh, you know, uh, a neuromarketing tool. So they're kind of using the human body in itself as a marketing tool to reach out uh, to the customers in the best interest. And some of these brands that have listed on the left-hand side, the likes of Amazon, PayPal, Disney, they've already started doing it. Coke likes to build the story around the red color. And there is a, you know, you might feel only why is it red? And the stories are going back to the Christmas days and Santa built around red and white, but they've tried to, you know, build it around it because there is something more to the science than just the red color. It's all about neuromarketing. So while we are putting our thoughts together for the next few years, artificial intelligence and neuromarketing, these two, would be the biggest drivers, so to speak. There would be hardly any brand, hardly any company, which would be uh, in, able to put together a marketing plan without having uh, the thoughts around these two. Now, on that note, there are a lot of predictions, uh, uh, you know, in terms of marketing skills, in terms of what the 2025 would look like. As I said, artificial intelligence, neuromarketing, these two would be the biggest drivers. And there would be a big change from what we are seeing today is as per the studies done uh, and there can be uh, some drops as well in terms of where the spends are today and what they would look like over a period of time. But uh, uh, my concerted thoughts are built only around these two because I feel that uh, till the time you are able to get the science correct you would not be able to do the conventional marketing because if you believe that uh, you would be able to do the hackneyed versions going on with digital, you know, everybody says digital marketing is uh, the future, but it is not uh, the, in the bigger term might look uh, very correct, but it, it, ha it has to get deeper. Four years back, five years back, you could have gone away and said that, you know, I'm uh, doing social media activations, Instagram, Facebook, <clears throat> and trying to integrate my ad, ad campaigns around uh, you know, a couple of websites relevant to my brand, etc. But it has gone beyond. It has gone deeper in terms of insights, in terms of uh, how the entire ecosystem is evolving and how you have to adapt to. Because uh, when you're looking at the fashion business per se, the retail industry, it is very complex. You know, it is not as straight. The, uh, in num the number of SKUs that you have to sell in the retail business are many fold. Uh, visa is uh, what you would have uh, probably in uh, any other industry. When you look at the car industry, the mobile industry, you would have less number of options to look at uh, reaching out uh, to your uh, uh, final customer. You know, you're not you're not creating a car every day. You're not creating a mobile phone every day. You know, probably there's a cyclical pattern which is evolve, which is in lesser in terms of SKU options. Now, when you are in the retail industry, it is far more complex because you are trying to sell. Uh, you know, a wide array of products to the customer, you know, right from uh, probably in any brand for that matter, there would be at least 150 to 250 options to sell every season. And when you're trying to sell as high option, as high number of options as I'm talking about, it is extremely imperative that you are able to intelligently draft a marketing plan to build your success story around each and every of those products, because one faltering might uh, just jeopardize your entire business plan and the marketing working plan as well. So uh, although the retail industry is not as tech savvy as probably the other um, uh, IT world, I would say at, at this stage, except for the online world as what I've said, but it is imperative 
and the, the retail industry has no choice but to adapt to the changing scenario. Uh, there are challenges to evolving as well. You know, there would be a cost element involved in terms of uh, uh, how these uh, uh, you know players would be able to do. There might be uh, you know some integration in terms of uh, putting that uh, thought together. But yes, uh, that is the way it has to evolve because. Uh, each and every product that you're creating, each and every uh, store that you're creating has to be a success story. So uh, in order to do that, uh, artificial intelligence and neuromarketing is going to play uh, the most critical uh, element in times to come is what my thoughts are. Now, on that note, let's put together the, some, some of the strategies that we will be doing. There will be increasing complexity in consumer behavior decisions, you know, consumer purchasing decisions. Customer today is very complex. You know, you might have you might have a customer who is buying a high-end car. Uh, you know, he's traveling business class. He's buying an Apple phone, but still might like to go and buy things at a big bazaar store for his grocery. So he's the same customer, and he's still a value uh, value-driven customer at the heart of hearts, despite uh, being an HNI. And that is a complexity, and especially in a country like India, where there is so much of diversity, diversity around us, it is uh, the way it is. So personalization in product design and communication will be more uh, prevalent. So you have to get uh, very personalized in terms of the what the customers are looking at, because and that would evolve in terms of uh, uh, how you are trying to create. And they, this would evolve in terms of uh, your marketing intelligence. If you are able to narrow down that, a particular cross section of the customer is looking at this kind of a product and which would be an enabler from artificial intelligence and neuromarketing that this particular section of the customer is looking at this kind of a color, this kind of a product story, et cetera. You would be able to build the right uh, set of strategy around it. Transparency will dictate brand customer relationships. You have to be very transparent. You know, if your customers are not happy sharing data or a particular a format of information, you have to be transparent with them. <laughs> Mobile communications are becoming the center of marketing. There's no doubt about it. And that shall continue even in times to come. Now, personalized data driven marketing will be more friendly. So uh, you have to look at respecting the privacy of your customers and provide them the tools to uh, you know, allow them to choose what they want to be sharing in the information on and what they're not happy with. Because it's the same set of customer who might snub a telemarketer, but like to spend a lot of time uh, in uh, terms of uh, <coughs> digging out information on a subject of his interest. And that, uh, so you might, you cannot just say that uh, this is right and this is wrong. He is the same animal who might be using different facets at different point in time bases the interest that he has on a particular subject. So it's a complex thing, but yes, uh, the marketers have to dig deeper into it. And yes, as I said, uh, artificial intelligence and neuromarketing would be the enablers to making it happen. Now, more accurate metrics will continue to emerge. So since we are saying that uh, AI and neuromarketing will be doing it, so obviously the metrics have to be much more uh, accurate in terms of what the deliverables have to be. And the marketing organizations increasingly have to move from digital silos to integrated teams. So you might not just say that I'm a marketer, I'm a product specialist, I'm a digital specialist, etc. You have to work cohesively to make things work for your organization. As long as you're doing, and as long as you're thinking that uh, uh, this is the way the stories have to be built and uh, creating success stories, the product, uh, product person cannot just say that I made the best product on earth. It is not about that. It is all about... Uh, how well the uh, information flow has been all across the three functions in terms of what the customer is requiring, what the product team is creating, and how the marketer is able to you know, reach out uh, in terms of the communication, which has to be far more integrated and uh, well thought. In case you're able to do it, you would be a success story else the problems can really multiply many fold. And on that note, what we see is the paradigm shift in marketing in the year 2021 to 2025. It will be all about, uh, uh, you know, customer lifetime value, because when you are investing so much in on getting information about the customer, we are trying to invest not in terms of doing a transaction with the customer. What we are trying to do is we're trying to get deeper in terms of uh, 
making him our customer for a lifetime because when you're getting into deeper in terms of investing on the technology of knowing who he is who she is where is she spending what she's spending how she's doing it without getting into the privacy domain allowing him to uh, you know behave purchase etc the way it should be there is a lot of investment there is a lot of technology there is a lot of uh, thought process going into it and while you are doing so it is imperative that you look at a long term relationship you are not doing uh, you know one time um, uh, you know love with the customer it's a long term relationship that you are trying to build in and hence the game will change the tilt in uh, marketing spends the thought process would evolve completely and these lead generations will be much more uh, the lead generation will be much less of a focus so it's not about creating a lead every time it is all about sustaining it and taking it forward for a long term relationship and general marketing skills will be uh, for, for, will fall most entirely out of fashion so it has to be a meaningful conversation very apt and that would result in the right return on investment and you would be able to say yes uh, i am doing the right thing and on that note uh, i would like to say thanks to all of you and i'm sure uh, uh, i'll be happy to have question and answer sessions from um, the students and the fellow mates here and uh, i hope the session was okay sir i have a question yes sir like you said by the year 2025 we'll have uh, ai installed so my question is post covid when we are saying that the economy has gone 10 years back how can we ace the marketing in just 4 years when we still do not have that much of resources or funds to be that level of technologically advanced that ai is installed everywhere so we don't have the funds people are still unemployed people have lost their jobs so how in just 4 years how can we reach up to that level uh, well uh, a good question but uh, let, let's put the some of the facts um, in place uh, the gst collection for uh, india in the month of december was uh, probably the highest economy is uh, evolving uh, pretty fast in terms of what we saw this conversation would have had a different answer in the month of may june of 2020 to what it is today uh, our company for that matter was struggling to pay salaries in the month of uh, august september and by the grace of god we are hoping to get our bonuses now so what i'm trying to say here is the fact is it is a fast paced world things are evolving completely a lot of companies are back to uh, business in the last few months especially from uh, october onwards there could be some of them struggling still and the fact of the matter is it is all about uh, you know survival for the fittest as long as you are able to have a clear cut plan in place and a meaningful plan in place you would be there in business the companies who were thriving on a short term uh, strategy obviously did not uh, Uh, were not able to sail through the situation, and there have been a lot of changeovers in the global scenario as well. So while we are saying that uh, in the next four or five years the integrations would happen, there would be a lot of cohesiveness built around, uh, uh, you know, uh, across functions, across companies. So that is what is going to make the changeover. You know, it is not about uh, ruling out the fact there would be a lot of cost in input cost going into creating such in huge investments, and hence we said that. one has to look at a long term relationship it is not about doing some uh, marketing activation and saying chal gaya to theek hai nahi chala to koi baat nahi dusra kar lenge next time it is about doing the right things the first time so uh, you know that is what will make the change over and hence people would be the companies would be prepared investing as long as they look at look at uh, a long term investment let's take an example of a lot of brands like adidas etc have waited for 15 20 years to break even in the country because they know it's a right investment in on the business side and similarly as long as it's a right investment for the business companies or brands would wait for a higher period of time to break even or even in the marketing standpoint i hope i've been able to answer your question yes sir thank you so much thank you uh, uh... Uh, good good morning anurag and uh, thank you excellent presentation thank you uh, good to see you after some time thanks a lot uh, jyoti uh, jyoti are you there yes sir i think we can have the questions at the end of the session you know inaugural session all the questions that are there we can they can be posted at the end okay sure sir yeah okay uh, thank you anurag thank you thanks a lot thank you Uh, thank you so much, sir, for your stimulating words here and telling it so right that paradigm shifts into marketing 
either the breakdown or break even. So students need to learn that they need to have not only the organizations engaging them into the workforce, but also that consumer engagement has to be the next step. We're talking about those blurring silos to going across the business landscape on the global level. I take this humble opportunity of thanking Anuraksa for sharing his views and reviews from the industry. Well, guys, the story is yet more to go here. The storytelling and the brand building process is still going on. With Jim Skalkaji, we are tuned to the next panel of experts. I take this humble opportunity of introducing our very important next speaker for the day, Mr. Rajiv Gupta, sir, who is the business head with the personal consumer segment with Reliance Retail. Well, coming with the rich ex experience and expertise of more than three decades with various Indian and MNC organizations in, with repute in the domains of retail, sales and marketing functions of the organization. Sir super specializes into the domains of retails, of food supply chain, automobile sales and marketing, agricultural equipments, retail finance, general and life insurance. Well, coming up with this mosaic of experience into helping you build your career landscape from these various perspectives and domains. Sir has been working with Tata Motors, two escorts, and working for more than around one and a half decade with Reliance Retail. Well, coming from the world of automobiles and retails, may I call upon Rajiv Gupta, sir, to enlighten our students for the upcoming marketing, marketing trends 2025. Over to you, sir. Rajiv, sir. Rajiv, sir, do we have you with us? Um, yes. Yeah. Thanks, ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, in fact, you know, Dr. Amanda Sati Sharma has already, Sishet has already, you know, covered a lot of things uh, in about, uh, you know, feature of marketing, uh, sales and marketing in India, retail marketing, and followed up by uh, Mr. Anurag Sharma. So what I will do is I will take you the practical aspects of what's happening in India. You know, we are hearing that what trend is going to come up, uh, which is happening worldwide, which may or may not happen. People may have suspicion what's happening in India or what may not happen in India. So probably, you know, I will take you to the practical world what's happening, which is already going on in certain some of the organization or which will uh, start, you know, growing up in the coming uh, time, you know, in the next two, three, uh, up to four years. As all of you know that you know Indian uh, retail industry is about 1.3 trillion dollars. Out of the total, you know GDP of 2.8 trillion, uh, 1.3 trillion dollar is uh, the retail industry in India, uh, which is growing at a rate of about 11 percent CAGR. So in the times to come, you know probably what I will touch upon is you know impact of technologies is uh, technology in 2025 up to 2025. You know, because a lot has been discussed about uh, other things. So in by 2025, you know, you need to be, you know, smart has to get much smarter, fast has to get fierce, and, you know, personalization has to get into perfection. And this can be done through, you know, probably through technology, with the help of technology only. As you know that, you know, these new technologies have great impact on all the formats. You know, probably uh, there are certain... Uh, uh, domains of the retail industry, which can be at the store level, it can be in the supply chain, it can be into, you know, post uh, uh, customer acquisition. So, so probably, you know, a lot can be debated upon. I will touch upon small, small things, you know, so uh, part of that. Otherwise, you know, you can go for hours. We are already running uh, short on time. Uh, we are going running by 2025 by minutes. So I would like to wrap up within the next 15, 20 minutes. When we say the customer acquisition, the first of all is customer acquisition. When we do the customer acquisition, you know, a lot of artificial intelligence, which is already coming into place, which has been discussed by Mr. Anurag also, a lot of companies are putting into place. But other than that, you know, probably we have to fulfill the customer demand. Once you uh, have a customer acquisition, the customer comes to your store, probably, you know, we have to fulfill his demands, what he's looking for. And there can be different seasons, different, you know, times. 
and different uh, demography within the state only, let's say within Delhi, you will have a different customers. Let's say if you go to West Delhi, there will be more population of uh, you know uh, South Indian people. If you go to Palgaji, you will find more of uh, you know people from the east, uh, you know which is uh, uh, Bengal. So so in that case, probably your assortment in the retail industry has to be such that the all the you know let's say you have a hundred stores in, uh, in in a, in a city like Delhi, all the hundred stores SKUs cannot be same because otherwise you will fall down on you will lose out on certain customers. And you will have dead vintage at your store because I know that you know a particular Lipton tea you know sells in a particular area or within the particular state. But if the same thing if I apply to Gujarat, probably that may not work because in Gujarat you will understand that Bag Bhakti Chai, which is now getting momentum in other states also, is so popular that you need to have a Bag Bhakti Chai if you want to keep any any SKU of the tea in Gujarat stores. Similarly, in Delhi. If you go to West Delhi, probably you need to keep a you know variety of rice, which can be sona masuri or pony boiled rice, which probably most of us may not be aware about it. But if we don't keep these SKUs, those customers will not be my customers, and they will they will walk out to a neighborhood store from where you know they will get their SKUs, which are uh, you know from their own state origin. Same same is the case with Kalkaji and within Delhi, you know, you will most of you know that you know there are different areas whereby you know more of a Punjabi population lives, whereas a Bengali population lives, and there are certain you know uh, South Indian population lives. Although we should not be you know more uh, uh, thing like this, but, but probably in the retail industry when you go. So at that time, you know, you have to see where your customer is and what he demands. If you don't do that, then you lose out of the customers. Then when we so the artificial intelligence helps us in you know in an area whereby you know this type of customer we, we are able to find out their you know purchase patterns, how many stores in which store, you know, which, which SKU is selling more. This is all a you know back office calculation, which defines which stores to be will uh, will be keeping which SKU and up to which level, and what will be the reorder levels for that. This, this is already happening, and because of which, you know. Uh, we are able to you know generate more sales if we uh, you know supply these SKUs according to the customer requirement. I remember you know about three years back, Holi was on second of uh, second or third of March. This year it will be on 28th of March. So these are all back back end calculations. Otherwise, you no. Know, as all of you might be knowing, you know there is a lot of basin and oil sale during the Holi season because you know everybody might be making. Uh, Gujiyaj and Pakoras and everything, uh, maybe on the day and before the festival also. So, so you, you need to stock good amount of oil, you need to stock good amount of basin in that. But if you go as per monthly forecast, so then probably I need to have three years back, I need to have the same SQs at my store level up to 28th of Feb so that you know, you know people can buy in the last week of Feb, they can buy for the holy purchases. But if I don't care, I, 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 don't, I don't feed into my system that this year the holy will be on 28th of March, then I will be holding that inventory for next 20 days because my sales will happen from 20th of March onwards. So these are the things, you know, whereby, you know, uh, you can put the certain tools into, you know, retail forecasting, inventory management, whereby you are able to reduce the inventory holding time also, inventory turnover increases, and which results into up to 1.3 to 1.5 percent profitability in this retail segment. I'm talking about grocery retail segment, but uh, you know there can be uh, you know different formats whereby this 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 can be on a low, lower or higher side also. Then then we we can put into this uh, same uh, intelligence into sourcing also, because sourcing you need to source from the field. You you need to source your products from the state of origin, country of origin, or, or, or a village of origin. There are certain areas, there are certain uh, you know, pulses, rice, et cetera, et cetera, whereby in a particular area, this particular crop happens. If you buy from there, you, you will be beneficial. If you don't buy, all the all the onion supplies happens in Delhi you know, from Nasi. Similarly, you know, Agra feeds throughout India, the potatoes, all the you know, potatoes are grown in everywhere. They are grown in Punjab also. But Punjab potatoes are consumed, you know, they are, they are not uh, stored uh, basically for a longer period. 
Similarly, you know, if you talk about apples, etc., apples, kinno uh, apples are stored, which are which can be sold up to March. But whereas Shimla apple and other apples, uh, you know, they get over by December also. Otherwise, up to March, you, know, you will, they, they don't have storage capabilities. So you need to know the right type of sourcing, right time of sourcing, and where to store that. Then comes the customer retention, what has been talked about. You know, people, everybody knows that the customer has to be, you know, you need to retain the customer for, you know, future this thing. But a word came, you know, whereby, you know, uh, I think Mr. Anurag mentioned and Dr. Sab also, Dr. Seth also mentioned, customer lifetime value. If we create a customer lifetime value, probably, you know, we will be much richer. Any organization, and when we talk about customer lifetime value, a company called uh, you know Apple, which most of you might be knowing, comes to my mind. If you see the cash flows of that, cash reserves of that company is 197 billion dollars. It is two trillion dollar market capitalization, which is almost you know as against 2.8 trillion dollar of uh, GDP of India. So one company itself, because they have they they have customer lifetime value. If you buy an iPhone, probably it is it is very rare a chance that you will shift to any other product. Next time also you will buy an Apple iPhone. When you buy an Apple iPhone, you will buy an Apple Watch also. You will buy a Mac uh, iPad also. You will buy you will buy you know Mac uh, laptop also. So they have created themselves a branding positioning in such a fashion, and customer is seeing value into that. Although you know he is rated to pay a much higher cost as compared to any any other cell phone or your laptop or any other things, but still, because they are creating value for the customers and they are able to hold on. So they see a customer who is would have purchased a probably a, uh, Apple Watch or Apple phone. Tomorrow they will be able to buying any more products. And tomorrow, if in near future, you know, let's say you know Apple car also comes, so probably people may you know, jump into that because they have seen the quality, the uh, technology behind uh, their phone, iOS phone, which is not available anywhere else. They keep it with themselves, whereas, you know, Android technology available to, you know, thousands of uh, phone manufacturers. So this is creating value for the customer. When we talk about customer experiences, you, know, uh, you, you, can, you can stop me in between, you know, if I'm, uh, you can question me, you know, if I'm going a little too fast. Uh, because of the limited time, you know, I would like to cover you know, few, few things. Uh, when we are talking about, uh, you know, at a store level, there can be two things. One is we generate customers, more and more customers. We provide the SKUs required by them. But on the other hand, you know, if we have to, uh, you know, increase our profitability, uh, we can use, you know, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, technology into use to, stop certain things like say one, one of the things you know your word use uh, in retail industry is shrinkage. Shrink, shrinkage as you might be knowing you know shrinkage, shrinkage is one part of major part is shop lift, uh, shop lifting another can be employee theft and third can be administrative uh, you know mistakes in india uh, you will realize that 3.2 percent is the average shrinkage which happens that means if i stop this Straight away, my profitability increases by 3.2% of the turnover, which is about, you know, hardly 8 to 10% for any retailer. So that means there is a scope, you know, your 25% to 30% of the profit goes into, you know, shrinkage. And major part of that is shoplifting, which can be stopped because by using, you know, more of technology, you know, you, you can have cameras, you can have, uh, you know, infrared readers. Uh, you know, you can have, you know, barcoding and then uh, so many things. Uh, as of now, probably India uses only 0.19% of the total, you know, revenues towards this, uh, you know, technology to stop uh, your shrinkages. Whereas globally, it is 0.31%. And when you know that in India, you know, we have got a tendency, you know, because, uh, you know, it's a developing country. People sometimes, you know, when they visit a mall, they might not have seen these things. And they just, you know, try to pick it up. You know, they know they, they think that nobody is looking at it, and uh, which accounts for forty-five percent of the total uh, changes. Twenty-three percent is probably, you know, these are the trends, which is the employee theft, and twenty-two percent can be administrative lapses. Uh, you, uh, I will give you a very raw example, which we might be knowing. Let's say Alfonso Mango. 
which can be you know 500 rupees a kg whereas a badam or which you call safeda mango or maybe uh, your tota puri or uh, uh, maliyabadi mango which can be you know 50 rupees a kg or 40 rupees a kg or 60 rupees a kg so sometimes it happens a guy a billing guy doesn't know about it and a customer picks up intentionally or unintentionally he picks up alfenjo mango and a guy when he's punching into that sometimes he punches as a safed or badam so your straight away 500 rupees uh, kg sku gets filled at 50 rupees a kg so this can happen intentionally and unintentionally which we have seen both ways also california mango almond 800 rupees a kg whereas if you talk about mamra which is 4000 rupees a kg so again the similar things happen and they they do happen at store and we have seen good amount of people you know doing it what people do you know they will have a uh, you know shaving razor they will put into a you know uh, any toothpaste uh, box or maybe you know a shaving cream box and they will steal away that so these are the things you know whereby if you put technology into place probably if you are able to stop that good amount of you know let's say which is i am saying from 3.2% if you are able to bring down to 1% or 1.5% so this will straight away add to your profit rate if we come out customer experiences you know at the store level you know new technology are coming which has already been started at few of the stores you know when, as soon as a customer enter into a you know, particular store you know with your retina identification or through your through a mobile network where you know because you are carrying a particular mobile which has got a history you know because that mobile is registered with the retail format as soon as you enter into that the ai will pick up that this is mr so and so if if tomorrow you think you know if you are entering into a store and and somebody says yes uh, welcome mr anurag sharma you know welcome to lens retail or welcome to you know world of uh, so and so so uh, world of clarks so so probably you know somebody will be pleased to note that yes this this is a welcome you know personalized welcome as you might have seen in the old days you know you know a neighborhood shopkeeper used to say hello mr gupta hello mr sharma how are you and he will ask you 10 questions and he will you the items which you require because he knows you know what is your price if you say you ask him uh, you know you give half kg tea he will give you the tea brand which you generally take and in unless you specify because he knows that so these are the things which a retailer retailer cannot do but artificial intelligence can do for you so that's why we need to put technology into place thereby uh, uh we 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 combine the wisdom of the past uh, you know and 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 technologies of uh, of the world so that you know we are able to retain customer we are able to generate better customer experiences for a you know when we say again lifetime value because we would like to uh, retain that customer for the lifetime because he is a shopper from his, as early as you know let's say when he is 5 6 years of old up to 80 years 90 years he will be coming to your store to buy different things different patterns of course the shopping pattern may change but he is customer for life ai and neuro uh, neuro marketing has been discussed uh, by dr said as well as mr anurag also i would say you know similarly ar and vr will also play uh, you know bigger role uh, by 2025 in fact uh, you know you, uh, few companies have already installed vr mirrors and in the during the covid pandemic time it is much much useful tomorrow if you go to a you know any any uh, you know let's say vision experts or men's card or anywhere to try your you know uh, glasses of pair a pair of glasses you know the frames so so they have to you know uh, sanitize again you know because when you buy a pair of uh, lenses probably you might be trying 10 20 30 you know frames of different uh, varieties and sizes different colors different uh, you know value before finalizing to a one so after that you know all these shop uh, you know shop people uh, all these shops they have to sanitize all these it's a big task tomorrow it, you know if there is a mirror but you will are there you know you are able to try out you know you just click on a particular lens and uh, you know it shows on your face and you are able to see in the mirror the how it look like you know probably it will save your time also and you know it will save you know salesman's time also and the effort which goes into sanitizing and and if it happens you know even the customers more and more customers will come because they know that yes they are, you know uh, this store is able to maintain is it 
they are there uh, you know uh, certain uh, apparels you know lingerie items which are kept in cold store you know so that the elasticity you know doesn't go away so so such brands you know those are very very costly they are maybe 10 20 times premium, 10 20 times premium than the normal one so they require specialized this thing so so organizations retailers have to create such environment such technology that you know people are able to value it they are able to see it and and and, and they pay for the same because somebody mentioned you know from where the money will come for technology let me tell you gentlemen technology pays for itself because human cost will keep on increasing you know whatever salaries we are drawing today tomorrow we will be drawing much more than that whereas once you put a capex into technology and one of the example can be you know i might be diverting you know uh, in the warehousing section which you have to cover you know uh, now the in the times to come the warehouses will be fully automated fully automated and i am happy to share with you there is a company in gurgaon itself you know one can see for that gray orange you can use google it the, the, the gray orange company you know it is because the world is not very far off it is not japan or us is making this gray orange company is making butlers and sorters for automated uh, you know your warehouses so they can work 24 hours they don't need a break they don't need a key break and and manpower cost will not go up whereas if we we, we keep you know manpower you know three shifts it is very difficult to manage for their transportation and everything and and there can be man management issues also whereas if your your warehouse is fully automated it is working 24 hours and in the night time you know the traffic is less for the retail formats it is much easier to drop the material in the night time to the stores or to, you know the location wherever it is as compared to during the day time so 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 these you know fully automated warehouses whereby you know your uh ports will be working you know ports will go and they will just pick up the material you know whatever is there you know replaced i they will scan that and you know these ports will go to that particular location i know you will find you know number of videos on the google and i think you know all all the management students look into that because that's that's going to happen in the very near future uh, in all the warehouses uh, you know big big warehouses technology warehouses in india for automobile or where it is retail this is this much more useful inventory management you know today inventory you know it's a way major chunk uh, for everybody and in case of you know dead sales you know because the food articles the grocery articles you cannot sell it after year the bbd is over and in certain cases the bbd can be three days and certain cases bbd can be up to one year or two years in food articles so so if you don't manage your inventory uh, properly uh, depending upon the you know the days of the week uh, or or maybe the season or the festivity then you are dead then because whatever you have purchased kept at store ultimately it has to be liquidated and it cannot be liquidated because these are food articles this has to be stepped down so 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 probably you know if we do a proper inventory management with the help of technology uh, which is already being done because the data you know the back end uh, calculations are being done as soon as a customer purchases i can i can share you certain examples of you know how how we manage inventory or uh, how we manage the order level as soon as you know a billing happens at any of the store uh, you know across the many stores throughout india so the data in sap goes that this particular article is sold at such and such location at such and such place so which goes to a particular dc level where came from the material which is feeding to the particular store there so many articles today are sold out and our the order level is this so automatically it generates a demand it generates a order which will go further to the different vendors those who are supplying whether they can be in 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 house vendors or maybe outside also so this will automatically we go that on such and such date this material has to be supplied that is tomorrow or day after or maybe after five days so that your inventory levels are managed you don't waste on that you don't waste uh, on your uh, you know uh, expiry articles uh, another one is from the warehouse you know it can be a route planning a route planning can be done through ai you know the google maps are already there it will give you the best route planning because you know when when thousands of vehicles have to leave early morning 
uh, to supply to you know your white goods, let's say TV, fridge, and uh, laptop and mobile phones to different location, which can happen with uh, Reliance Digital, like in Amazon or maybe you know Flipkart or anybody. So, so the route planning can be done in a better way. You know, if he knows that these are the routes, these are the supply points. You know, these are the water levels, and a particular uh, vehicle can go to a particular route. So, this is all automated, which is happening as of now in most of the organizations. Or otherwise, it will further pace momentum as soon as you know because number of deliveries and everything increases. Uh, uh, Dr. Anurag mentioned somewhere the large number of SKUs in retail formats. You know, uh, this is again, uh, you know, we need to manage all these SKUs depending upon the local demographic. Uh, this may be look funny that somebody, you know, one of my relatives told that, you know, the sugar which you sell is less uh, sugary, less sweet. I, I was surprised, you know, how it can happen. Then, uh, we took a feedback and we, 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 we did some trials in our you know, lab and found out that the sugar which we sell is M grade, which is you know, a little bigger, bigger in size. Whereas in most of the market, people buy S grade, which is a smaller size. When you take a teaspoon of M grade sugar and you take a one, uh, one tablespoon of S grade sugar, you will find the difference in weight because of the size. No, this will be more concentrated in S grade because the space air space will be less in M grade it will be more. So if you use one tablespoon of both the sugar, not the quantity I am saying, quantity of M grade will be lesser. But if you use one tablespoon of both the sugar, the sugar which we sell will be less sweet. So th 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 these are the customer perception. This is this nothing to do with that. You know, sugar is the sugar. You know, the same sugar content is there both the sugars. But but sometimes then you have to you know go into customer psyche. After that, he started providing, you know, S grade sugar also because then people whosoever wants to buy S grade sugar, they will buy a small size sugar. Uh, whosoever wants to buy M grade sugar, they will buy M grade sugar. So these are the customer learnings when you when you interact with the customer more and more, you will come to know, and accordingly you will put technology into place so that it helps you in decision making. It will it will help you to store what ratios of S grade sugar and M grade sugar has to be kept in store so that you know probably you are able to serve your customers so uh, this is what uh, you know i was say about uh, anything uh, a small small so i will take you know maybe one or two minutes also when we say okay you know technology is you know probably uh, because of this pandemic we came to know that now stay at home has become a you norm know, and, and it's, there are so many economies developing. You know, you might have seen the subscription of Netflix, uh, you know, Big Basket or Country Delight or Geo Mart or Swiggy or Amazon or Domino's. All these, of course, Domino's, etc. You know, earlier was also there. But, but but you will find, you know, these 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 brands have got developed. They have got more and more customers during this pandemic because they know that you know it is cashless. It is sitting at home. You can, you can, you can, you need not, you know, if you want to watch any movie, you know, you're sitting at home, you can do that because the theaters were closed. And during this pandemic, you would not like to move out. Similarly, you know, earlier, you know, your milkman used to give the milk. Now today, you know, there's so many, and a company comes to my mind, you know, which is a country delight, you know, which has started operation in Delhi. And there are so many others also. So it is convenience, you know, just download their app, you know, what has to be order has to increase for tomorrow or it has to decrease for tomorrow uh, you know that can be done you know on a daily basis you come to know that yes there is, is a cashless transaction your order level in you know, the last 10 days what you have bought similarly this company will also get a knowledge that on which day of the week you buy a paneer or which day of the paneer uh, week you you buy you know maybe card from them and on a daily basis which 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 milk you know you buy whether it's skim milk or cow milk or buffalo milk so so lot of uh, you know this thing uh, today uh, i think you know two days back there was a uh, article you know whereby i am amtabar student has started a you know rickshaw he, he owns more than 1000 rickshaws and it's a good business in fact none of the big businessmen might have thought about it but you see the returns on the rickshaw business you know or the auto rickshaw uh, which are given on rent uh, to these guys is, is enormous you know probably any business may not give it to you so uh, 
probably i would like to wrap up with this because it's already you know my time is over uh, probably i might have overshifted also uh, any any question and answers maybe you know you can pick up as dr said suggested you know at the end of the session uh, i would be more than willing to you know answer those thank you thank you Thank you, sir, for sharing your most valuable insights with all of us here. Well, talking about that, if Domino's is going to dominate the market, or and how are we going to handle the inventory? Well, so much more had been known from you, sir. Thank you so much for taking time out and addressing our beloved students. Well, uh, we are going to go ahead, students, right from retail chain to going ahead into the world of internet. Well, digital marketing, they say, has its fourth day till 2025. Let's hear from the expert that how the marketing trend 2025 is going to be. I take this humble opportunity of inviting our very valued guest for the day, Mr. Sujoy Chaudhary, sir, who is Director, Customer Relationship Management, Business Application with the very well-renowned global organization, Microsoft. Sir had uh, also had the experience of working with NIIT, Navision, Videocon, and Sir is coming up with the educational expertise from the prestigious and prodigious Faculty of Management Studies, Delhi University. Well, what more to say? May I please call upon Sujoy, Sir, to address the students. Over to you, Sir. Uh, sir, you are not audible. Uh, no, sir. No, sir. Uh, sir is not being audible. Yes, sir, we cannot hear you. Hello, is that better? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, wonderful. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about this. <laughs> technical glitch. So uh, thank you, uh, Jyoti, for this introduction and uh, uh, pleasure as always to be a part of this uh, event, uh, 25th uh, anniversary of GEMS. Uh, and I wish everybody all the best. Big thank you to Dr. State also for having me here. Uh, so uh, I think I'm going to keep it really short. And uh, what I would like to do is uh, just touch upon the role of the technology, uh, you know, as we are seeing it today. And the way we see technology uh, moving from being an enabler to uh, being a driver of the business. All right. So can we have the slides, please? Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you so much. Can you just put that on the slide, uh, slideshow mode? Just click on the, just press Shift F5. Yeah, perfect, thank you. So this is how I think we have been evolving over the last, uh, 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 you know, a few centuries, if I may say so. You know, the steam engine making way for the electric engine and then, uh, since the last 30 years, we have seen electronics and IT evolve. Uh, and uh, that's really changed the whole landscape, right? Had it not been for the internet, uh, you know, things wouldn't have been the way it is today. And we wouldn't have been on this Zoom call, uh, you know, from different parts of the country, maybe. So it's all the evolution of IT that we have seen over the years. And uh, things have dramatically changed the business models of companies not just IT companies, you know, all companies are changing so rapidly uh, because of uh, uh, this IT revolution. But now what we are seeing is that 
we are going digital right and there's a change uh, you know as we move uh, from it to digital and that's what i want to uh, talk about in the next 10 minutes maybe and that is what we are calling the digital transformation uh, of companies you know how companies today are adopting to smart technologies to drive business outcomes you know which will give them the competitive advantage i think that is the key uh, you know you may focus on the four p's uh, of uh, porter and the, all the mba books you know product price place and promotion but we are seeing that technology is really the key driver now and uh, nothing can help companies as technology can okay and that is what we are calling the uh, digital transformation uh, which uh, is being driven by the smart companies and uh, what this digital transformation is en enabling as i said driving outcomes it is making the companies more data focused more analytics focused you know we have had erp solutions and crm su supply chain solutions uh, for the last 20 years now which has churned out so much of data okay so now we are moving from transactional systems to analytical based systems and now when we have so much of data what that data is giving the companies is a pattern analytics a pattern which tells companies what to do you know which segments to focus on which uh, type of customers to focus on micro targeting can be done uh, you know instead of uh, you know uh, rapid bombing and one size fits all kind of an approach you know and and i think that's the biggest differentiator which uh, companies can be um, uh, you know expecting out of technology uh, now because there's a pattern through technology what companies are able to do they are becoming more proactive okay so the approach is becoming a lot more proactive uh, than uh, reactive okay and this proactive approach is uh, i would say largely because of four elements of technology one is the cloud second is uh, the mobiles the smartphones which i think all of you have in your pockets uh, around you uh, you know which allows you to order a food book a ticket uh, watch a movie anything uh, on a on a smartphone today uh the, the next is uh, analytics okay and uh, the fourth is social i think these four elements together cloud mobile social and uh, analytics are driving the digital transformation okay and making the organizations more reactive and and i heard all the three speakers and we rightly so uh, talk a lot about ai and machine learning and just i just wanted to clarify to all of you who are picking up technology now Uh, when we talk about ai and when we talk about machine learning it's only possible when you are in the cloud okay you you may be having a desktop computer in front of you uh, a laptop in front of you uh, with a little server sitting where all the data resides okay you cannot get ai out of that when you get ai artificial intelligence which churns out humongous amount of data to look at patterns and give you outcomes you know you need huge computing capacity okay and that huge computing capacity cannot uh, be delivered from a laptop or a desktop sitting at home it has to be delivered from the cloud so what is this cloud this cloud is uh, you know a huge super computer a huge super computer which is being owned by a large company made be a microsoft or a google or amazon the huge humongous computers which has great computing capacity to analyze data and throw meaningful analytics to the consumers to the recipients of the data so that they can take fast business decisions be proactive and be agile and this agility is what is making the difference between a big company and a great company okay so i think uh, uh, ai ml and all these things that are yes driving uh, all companies forward today and all this is being driven by the cloud and cloud computing okay and and that's what uh, is driving the digital transformation as we are seeing or we calling the fourth revolution all right so uh, what is digital transformation we said are driving business outcomes now if we look at the business outcomes which we expect uh, these top companies to focus on are basically four four business outcomes that all companies are trying to focus on and what are these 
let's uh, move to the next slide, please. Uh, I've lost the screen share. Yeah, thanks. And uh, can you just go back to the uh, slide view and click on slide number two, please? Yeah, next slide, please. Can you just click on next? Yeah, thank you. So uh, the top four business outcomes that we are seeing uh, all big companies uh, working towards are these four. One is uh, customer engagement, how they would engage with customers. Second is empowering employees. Third is optimizing operations. And fourth is transforming their products. Okay, so these are the four target areas uh, of digital transformation for all companies. And this is what they're trying to improve on using AI, using ML, using all the uh, transactional data they have. Okay, so what I would like to do very quickly is give you a couple of use cases, quick examples of uh, each of these areas. Now, let's say if you're talking about uh, engaging with customers, how marketing companies are engaging with customers today. And I think uh, my uh, honorable speakers uh, before me have given enough examples from Reliance and Clark. Uh, so uh, let's assume, you know, uh, there's a marathon season and many of you may be enjoying your runs and you see an ad, uh, you know, of Airtel or IDBA marathon coming up and you want to buy a new pair of shoes. Okay, let's say Adidas shoes. And uh, you go to Adidas online website, you check out the latest uh, technology of shoes, you spend time, look at the price, the promotions and uh, close the website after five minutes. And... A few hours later, maybe you uh, are again at the Facebook site or watching news uh, on, on, on your laptop. Okay, you will find an ad of Adidas shoes, the same shoe, uh, you know, which you had seen a few hours back at the Adidas online site. Now, what's happening? Uh, th that's not a coincidence. That ad is targeting you, right? So uh, th there is smart technology, which Adidas online has adopted, which has tracked you as a prospect. Um, you know, and is uh, pushing the ad, the content to you very smartly. And after two days, when you go to maybe select city walk or any mall and you're crossing the Adidas showroom, you know, you might just get an SMS onto your phone, you know, saying that, uh, so we have a 25% off you if you buy the pair of shoes today. So th these are all, you know, uh, omni-channel uh, strategies, smart technologies being powered by the cloud, AI, uh, which is making um, uh, you know life so much easier for marketers today and uh, would have sound like science fiction maybe five years ago. Okay, so how you are targeting an anonymous customers, making them register, uh, creating a prospect out of them, uh, converting them into a customer, and then uh, you know servicing them all through the life to achieve what we uh, call the customer lifetime value. Okay, so that's a great example. And there's so many similar examples of, you know, uh, customer engagement. Uh, let's move to the second pillar, empowering uh, employees. Okay, now again, uh, imagine that, uh, you know, you have just entered the Adidas showroom. Okay, let's forget the ad part. Uh, you as a customer, you're an existing customer of Adidas, you have entered the Adidas showroom uh, in a mall and you have your mobile in your hand, in a pocket. So what happens is there's a beacon uh, on, the, on the ceiling of the showroom and it is targeted, the rays are targeted on a mobile phone and immediately it picks up your data that you are Mr. XYZ and it throws that data into the database in the cloud and your customer profile comes up into the handle device uh, uh, you know, of the salesperson. And he says, okay, this is Mr. Amit Gupta uh, from such as the company, the last time he bought this pair of shoes and maybe now he can buy something similar. He's fond of running shoes. Maybe we can, we should show him the latest running shoes that we have. So the complete history of Mr. Let's say Amit Gupta, for example, is on the screen of the salesperson without a single word being spoken, right? So, so I, I mean, that's a much better degree of custom relationship uh, and uh, that leads to Obviously, custom lifetime value and a lot of loyalty 
uh, you know, uh, from this particular customer. So that's how technology is empowering employees to service customers better. Let's look at the third pillar now, optimizing operations. Again, a lot of examples all around us. Uh, uh, you know, if we talk about, let's say, retail. Retail is a very challenging uh, space and one of the biggest uh, challenges that we heard uh, from my previous speaker, Mr. Gupta of Reliance, is that inventory optimization, right? Uh, inventory optimization is a big challenge because you don't know which color, which size, which style would sell more in South compared to East or North of the country. And you should fulfill the stocks accordingly. So here sits an AI uh, driven engine, uh, you know, which churns out all the data, which does a historical forecast, which looks at all the sales data, uh, whether it's a Holi coming up or Christmas coming up, uh, you know, uh, what could be the special occasions which could drive uh, consumption higher and accordingly would say, okay, uh, next week we need to push maybe 20% 20, 20 more, uh, you know, stock to these 10 stores in West because uh, there's a function Ganesh Chaturthi maybe coming up there. Okay. So that kind of uh, data churning uh, being done on the fly uh, through artificial intelligence engine, uh, which is doing what? Which is just churning data. Uh, being, uh, you know, generated in the transaction system, which could be an ERP or a supply chain system, right? So it is churning that data. It is using its own logic, uh, the artificial intelligence, as we call it, uh, from the cloud and is throwing results. Uh, and, and, and uh, you know, uh, we have found at Microsoft that these are much more accurate results, uh, which is not possible by human beings. You know, and if the same results were to be churned out by human beings, by a team, by a team of, uh, you know, sales forecasting professionals, uh, you would need maybe 25 people working uh, for months and still you'll not get the same level of accuracy. Okay, so what machine learning, what artificial intelligence is doing here, they, they are giving you much uh, smarter insights to uh, drive your business, to optimize inventory, lower down costs. Okay. Uh, uh, that was the third pillar. And the final pillar that we have is transform products. And there again, we take feedback from our existing customers, from our potential customers. And these feedback are shared on real-time basis with the product team. Okay, you may have customers sitting in India, but the product team could be in China, could be in the US. So on near real-time basis, all these feedbacks are being shared with the product team so that they can improvise their offerings. They can... Uh, Consider that in the roadmap and, uh, you know, make sure that uh, the feedback is incorporated in the product improvement plan so that they come out with a, a smarter uh, product going forward uh, just to drive, uh, you know, uh, customer loyalty and satisfaction. So in short, these are the four pillars uh, focusing on customers, employees, operations and products, uh, you know, which help us to uh, kind of uh, uh, get the desired business outcomes. So in the interest of time, I will move a little fast. Uh, next slide, please. And quickly touch upon a digital transformation story at Royal Enfield. I'm sure all of you know about Royal Enfield. Uh, it's an iconic company uh, owning, um, you know, uh, motorcycles and now fashion apparels also. And if you just look, look at the next slide. Uh, the next slide talks about that uh, digital transformation journey, how their pre-sales, sales and service has been transformed using artificial intelligence and machine learning. Can we have the next slide, please? Yeah, thank you. So here, uh, I mean, it's a pretty crowded slide, but if you look at the three columns, you know, it's in search, in store and in use. When you look at in search, it's about, uh, you know, how a prospect uh, wanting to buy a bicycle uh, could reach out to the website, could call a call center or visit a store. You know, it's an omni-channel setup. Uh, how that contact can be then tracked by the sales and marketing team and how using artificial intelligence and machine learning, every contact can be given a rating, okay? So that the sales and marketing uh, does not kind of waste time, uh, you know, uh, giving equal importance to all the prospects. Depending on the ranking or the rating of uh, the prospects, 
uh, given by the AI engine, they will target only on the top 5% of the prospects so that the lead to uh, customer conversion can be much higher, you know, and they see a better ROI in their efforts. Uh, and then uh, once uh, the closure is done, the transaction happens in the sales, uh, in, in the sales system, uh, all that loyalty points are uh, uh, accumulated, uh, the manufacturing is done, which style, which style of the bike would fit uh, the prospect is also decided by the AI engine. You know, accordingly, you position which color, which style. Uh, so it's all uh, driven by AI now. And then if you move to the last column, that's in use. Uh, there again, the system automatically recommends the next service date, automatically sends SMS uh, onto the mobiles of, uh, of, of, of the user that your motorcycle is due, uh, you know, for a service. And it also uh, sends signals to insurance companies. You know, that's the what do you call it, like the concept of smart car, connected car, connected mobikes, you know, so every bike is now connected to the insurance companies, you know, and the insurance companies can track the behavior of the motorcyclist. Is he over speeding? How many accidents? What, uh, what is his behavior? And accordingly, they would charge the premium also the next time when the insurance is due. So what we're seeing across these three buckets of search in store and use is the customer lifecycle journey which is now uh, driven by technology to a very large extent. Okay, and that uh, allows uh, the, the, the users at Royal Enfield to service their customers better, uh, which they were not able to do earlier, uh, you know, without the smart technologies or what we are now calling the digital transformation. So I, I think that's uh, how we are seeing uh, digital transformation and the use of smart technologies uh, playing such a critical role uh, in the growth of companies going forward. So with these thoughts, I'll wrap up my uh, session here. And it was a real pleasure talking to you all. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Sujoy. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing your most valuable knowledge with all of us here today. My pleasure. Thanks a lot, uh, Pankaj sir is here. Good morning, Pankaj. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Satish. Good to see you after a long time. <laughs> yeah, it's always a pleasure. Right. Uh, Jyoti, continue, please. Uh, well, sorry, there was a small uh, technical glitch and humble apologies for the same. Well, guys, taking you ahead uh, from the digital transformation to the market still needs some reformation from you all who are going to act as marketing strategists in the times to come. Well, taking you ahead into the domain of marketing seminar, which is going to address on to the upcoming issues, challenges and opportunities, as well as strategies for the world of 2025. Well, Jyoti, ahead, Jyoti, uh, Jyoti, your smiling, cheerful face is not visible. I can only see your forehead. You're okay. Thank better. You. No, you need to focus better. Yeah, now it's better. Okay. Thank you, sir. 
So students, now we are going to get ahead with the galaxy of experts who are still yet to be explored. And I take this humble opportunity of introducing our very valued guest today, Mr. Pankaj Dubey, sir, who is a CEO with the Power Global Energy Services, as well as the co-founder with Power Global. Well, I know that energy sector is getting energetic in this year and in the times to come. We all know that petrol prices are striking high and the upscale uh, surge is going to, again, be both far and wide. Well, looking ahead with the uh, profile of Pankaj Sir, who is the top 50 Indian icon with 2016, the Black Book Top 100 Luxury Indian 2016, a renowned TEDx speaker who is looked upon for his intellectual uh, wealth, and the intellectual icon with 2020. Well, that pandemic had stri striked everybody onto the panic side. But yes, there's somebody who has made it all positive last year. Coming up from the domains of Polaris Indian Motorcycle to Yamaha to Hero to Intex. Well, he is a complete uh, portfolio of the expertise coming from the domains of automobiles and IT. Well, this is going to be the trend for 2025, where people look up to the expertise and the rich experience that Sir has garnered over the years and has willingly agreed to share it with all of us here today. May I call upon Pankaj Sir to address our students. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, and I'm really honored to be uh, today with on this forum. Uh, I've been associated with gyms for many, many years and I've been on coming as a guest to deliver guest lectures in the inaugurals and and the annual seminars and it's always a pleasure to be uh, associated with gyms and especially Dr. Sate. You know, we heard some very nice uh, talks by Anurag, uh, Rajiv and Sujoy on various aspects of marketing, uh, what's going to come in 2025. And uh, I would like to remind uh, you students to focus on the basics of marketing. You know, you must always remember that you have to look at what's in front of you. And if you do the basics right, you will encounter any challenges and you will be able to figure out uh, the best solutions always. What I have seen in my experience that most of the time, the marketing person just gets into trouble because he is not following the basics. And I've seen this happening at some of the biggest brands uh, in the world. Uh, and, and I got an opportunity to work with a few brands who were in a very bad shape. And uh, my experience of changing over and making them successful all told me one, one thing very clearly that do your basics right. If you do not do your basics right, you would get into trouble sooner or later. So in this, I would like to first uh, like to break certain things like a myth. You know, most of the time that you hear, you, we, we just hear that the Indian customer is very price sensitive and he wants to buy cheap products. Unfortunately, it's the biggest lie. None of us, none of the Indians buy the cheapest product. They buy the product which has the highest value of money. You know, so every Indian customer is like a businessman. You know, it's a very difficult marketing in India. And a and lot of companies, we heard one of the speaker talking about the, that the global company came to India and they could break even only after 10 to 15 years. You know why? Because they couldn't understand the Indian customer. What is, what do they buy? What do they see? For example, you know, the use of a toothbrush. You know, how the Indian customer buys the toothbrush and then uses it uh, till the time that he can uh, utilize it for cleaning his teeth. And then he goes on to dye his hair or go into doing some multiple stuffs. So the extraction out of the product, the value by the customer is like many, many times. So sometimes if your toothbrush, uh, they would also put, you know, the uh, toothbrush to put nada inside their pajamas. And therefore, if your toothbrush does not have that hole through which they can, uh, they will not go to buy your product. So to understand the Indian customer and how does he see the value of the product, you have to be very, very smart and you have to always see the basics. You know, there are uh, companies like McDonald's, we got reference to Domino's. 
Uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken doesn't offer vegetarian food any part of the world, but if they have to come to India, they have to offer it. Why? Because on Tuesday, most of the Indian who are even non-vegetarian on other days, but they don't buy. They don't buy non-vegetarian food on Tuesday. So if you are in the airline industry and you, you must know that on Tuesday, you have to reduce your non veg packets if you're trying to anticipate what should be the mix current, uh, that you have to use. In Navratri, everything will change dramatically in favor of vegetarian. So every so understand this Indian customer, it's very, very important to understand the basics. And that's why you know uh, companies make a lot of losses initially because they don't understand. They think that let's sell cheap product and we'll make more money. You will never make money selling cheap product in India. Otherwise, Indian market would have been flooded with Chinese product but it's, it never happened, especially in the automobile industry. So many Chinese companies have come into the country and none of them made it big, uh, except for now you have one or two who become smarter that how it has to be uh, dealt with. So, but the uh, and, uh, Indian customers have only accepted it after they, the owners of the brand understand that they are not asking for cheap product. They're asking for value for money. What can I offer in my product, which is can be seen as a customer that it's a value for me. You have to just, this, this, this one very basic mistake. Another big basic mistake the marketing <coughs> person usually do is that you associate yourself with the brand and you start marketing it the way that you see it. Like suppose that you watch Netflix, but you are selling a product which is for the rural market. Then you will understand that maybe Netflix is not being visible there or the technology is changing. And if they, it's already percolated there based on your survey that Netflix is now available in the rural areas also, then only you market, but never see that I see it, this channel, and therefore I will advertise here. It will never work. so. First thing is that differentiate yourself from the brand that you're representing. Suppose you are head of Royal Enfield Motorcycles marketing, but you don't know how to ride a motorcycle. Then, and you start choosing that uh, what, where we should advertise. First of all, you have to understand the customer. What do they do? Where do they go and buy? Why do they buy Royal Enfield as opposed to any other brand which is available at a much lower cost? So once you have understood that, don't try to impose your ideas that I see this, therefore let me see. You have to see from the eyes of the biker, why is he buying, who's that customer and what does he do? And therefore you have to differentiate. So this, this is where you have to decide to, uh, to market. And then on the basic side, I would like to say that the basic success of a marketing depends upon the P's, the product, what is the product, what is the price, what is the, where is it's available, which is a place, promotion, what's the kind of promotion you are doing. And then the fifth P, which is mostly people forget, is the people who are there in your team. If your team is a strong understanding, they are vibrant, they, they can work around the brand, they understand like you do, and you have a team around you, the chances of your success becomes much higher. And then, we, you know, no matter what technology will come, but very important thing, basics again, is the word of mouth of customer. What is the customer saying after buying your product? Most of the time people forget that and that is where the, they falter. The brands who do very well are the brands who are always worried about what is my current customer talking? If he's talking good about my brand, I will get more customers. If he's talking bad about my brand, my sales will not go up. My business will not go up. So therefore, word of mouth is very, very critical and you must always look at that. And then what is the extra that you are offering over your competition? If you have to increase your market share, you are always to look at what is the extra that I'm bringing on the table as a marketing person or as a salesperson or as a business development person, what is my company offering more or extra over what the customers are already getting it from the competition? So you, once you decide that, you will be able to do much better in terms of the marketing. So these are some of the basics. Coming to 2025, what new technology will come, I'd like to share with you. You, know, you have to always be very open to the new, new technology. New technologies keeps changing. When I passed out from my college, when I did my MBA, you know, at that point of time, I was a disruptor and I was seen as, I, 
I am a new technology person. And why? Because I knew how to operate computer. I could easily just sit down on a computer desktop and can work. Uh, and I knew how to do, you know, operate Microsoft Office. In fact, I did a course from NIIT to understand how does MS Office work? How, how can you work on a Microsoft Excel and PowerPoint just to have an extra edge over what the industry would have? So I'm talking about a 90s when it was just, uh, you know, not very uh, prevalent in the Indian industry and computers were just entering. So that was seen as a disruption. So what you have to see is that what is the latest coming and are you good at that? And can you bring that up and, and offer that to your customers and use that technology to reach out to your customers faster? You know, there was a time when uh, social media was banned in offices because people used to say, oh, social media means like they will enjoy, employees will not work. And HR used to be very, very, uh, vocal about it. No, I banned these social medias in my uh, office because the people don't work and they start enjoying. Today, you can't ban social media because the social media is the one of the biggest marketing tool today. And, and if you say that I will ban, you will lose your business. You will lose much lesser. So the, the technology keeps changing from time to time and you have to be adaptable to the new change. And that is what is very important and basics in life that you must learn. Now, talking about artificial intelligence, and a lot has been shared by our panelists so far. Uh, artificial intelligence is again, you know, it's not something which is being implemented now, but it has been, this is started in 1940s and 50s. The first conference on artificial intelligence was held in 1956, but to develop that and to use it in a practical format, it took many, many decades. And somewhere from last one decade, we start seeing use of that and, and moving forward, it will become even more useful. But be aware that this is the latest, but maybe by 2025, something else might come up. So what is more important is the basics of life that you have to know that I can use a new technology and if the new technology come, I will adapt that new technology. So that is something that I would like to inculcate with you and never have any fear about the new technology. Like when I was, like I gave you an example of when I started my career and when I was seen as a disruptor because I knew very basics, the latest at that point of time. Today, if you know AI or you don't know AI, it, it, if you know, there's a difference. So if you can use AI, then you are a smarter person. If you can't use AI, then there is a challenge. So you have to look at what is the latest coming and you have to get that. Maybe by 2025, something else might also come up. So you have to be open to new technology. That is what my message is. What's very important is that you have to be optimistic and you have to be visionary. You have to see what's coming next. You know, when, when you see that, yeah, computers are being used and uh, people in the industry are not very comfortable with computer, you have, before you enter into the industry, acquire that skill. And then you are like a master there. Similarly, like a new technology, which is coming up right now, if you master that, if you do a course on AI, along with what you do in the management, it will definitely add a lot of uh, growth for your own career and for your own success. So similarly, like whatever is coming up, latest technology, and if there's something which is great, try to acquire that skill, that is the message. And therefore you have to be always looking as a visionary that what's coming next and let me accept what it is. I'll give you an example, you know, I joined an IT company in text technologies and uh, to see what's going to come in future. This is uh, a time I'm saying early 2000s and um, I was uh, the head of IT business head for them, uh, sales and marketing head for them. And then uh, we thought that what's the new product that can be launched. And, and I figured out that if we get into the mobile handset business, it will become really very big. And I did all the research and, and then came out with a solution to the management that let's launch phones, uh, hand phones, uh, mobile phones. And Intex Telephone, Intex Mobile Phone was started by me. And, and then a big boom happened uh, in that area. Now, so that is where you have to learn what's coming next, what is going to be the next technology, what is going to be the next product which will give boost to the company. So a company which was 100 crores reached up to 8,000 crores in no time. Uh, that's I'm talking about in text technologies. So you, you have to look at, and because of that vision that, okay, we get into that telecom uh, side. 
So you have to be really, really smart at what's going to come next. Similarly, like if you talk about the industry today, especially automobile, which uh, I have been working for last two decades plus, and uh, in the automobile, there is going to be a big shift. Like if I see today on the road, I hardly see any electric vehicle, but I see that another five years to 10 years down the line, it will be the reverse. Everybody would be using electric vehicle. Now, there are a lot of challenges. It's very difficult, but the vision is, yeah, it's going to happen. Now, how it will happen? What can you do to facilitate that? And that is what I'm currently working upon. I'm the co-founder of Power Global, uh, which is an American company. And we started an Indian company, Power Global Energy. And we are working around this to facilitate the electric vehicle growth uh, globally and is to start within India. Similarly, you know, to be optimistic, like we know that COVID time was very tough. This is the time when uh, markets were closed. And, uh, but then this is the time where you could say, oh, nothing can happen, just relax, stay at home. But if you are smart, you can do a lot of things at that time. Like, uh, for example, if you're in the food industry, uh, like groceries, uh, you, you, that was the busiest time for them because everybody have, is sitting at home, but you have to work out the logistics that how you can send the food to the homes and that can create really good business for you. Similarly, you know, and people were hoarding, so you will have to be like, you can, if you can have the right inventory management, which other speakers have also spoken about, if you are re really very smart at that, you can maximize your profits during that time. The hotel industry was in a bad shape and Anurag did talk about his organization that how he is expecting this year bonus for the team where everybody is struggling. Now, what is very important is that, you know, at the time when there was a lockdown, nobody was visiting the hotel. And what were you thinking as a head of the hotel? What, like, let's close down, let's reduce the salaries, let's, everything is very negative. Or you were thinking, of, oh, it's a great opportunity. Why? Because uh, government does not have enough beds and people are becoming sick. People are coming from outside and there are no quarantine place available. Can I convert my hotel into a quarantine area? Can I give that option? I sell that. And so my occupancy rate will go up and I'll make money. So if you are smart, you will do that. And if you are not thinking about that, you may be, um, make, be making losses for your organization. So what you have to see is every op like even in COVID, there were companies which made huge money, huge profits, like IT industry. They really learned that, I mean, there's no point opening huge offices. Uh, people can work from home and it can be very efficient. And therefore, even if when the COVID gets over, I know that a lot of companies would not invest the kind of investment that they're doing on the infrastructure uh, to get everybody at one place because they have realized that, you know, it can be worked from home. Global marketing has opened up. You know, today, if you're making a product, you can uh, sell in a specific area, but with this technology change, with the use of digital media, you can actually reach out to any part of the world through uh, the digital media. It's, there's no restriction that you have to be only in the area that you are in. If your logistics works out, if you are smart, you can actually sell your product in multiple locations. So in a nutshell, I my recommendation to all of you would be that please stick to the basics of marketing, get the hang of it, get the hang of the customer, understand what he thinks, how he thinks, and then devise your strategy and, and work upon that. Budgets are important that how much money you have, but you, you have to be like what resources are available. And based on that, you decide your marketing and become smart. Like you are in a very niche industry and you say, no, no, the marketing budget has to be minimum 100 crores. You will never make it. You will never be getting that 100 crores because nobody is going to make losses. No entrepreneur is going to say, uh, marketing requires 100 crores, I'll give 100 crores because he would always look at what is the return of 100 crores. And therefore the marketing person has to always think on the smart way of what are the resource available and how I have to execute this uh, smartly, uh, understanding all the basics and, and get the output, the return out of this investment. So this is what I wanted to share. Thank you. I know it's uh, already, the session has been delayed. I'll close my uh, session here. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for sharing uh, your wealth of knowledge with all of us here. Uh, rightly said that the judicious mix of acquisition of skills and technology can lead to building markets and brands. Well, thank you, the Galaxy of Experts for the inaugural session. May I request our Honorable Director, Sir Dr. Ashok, 
uh, Sharma sir, to please thank all the Galaxy of Experts present. Thank you, Jyoti. Uh, thanks. Uh, I'm very grateful to all our honorable speakers who spared uh, the valuable time. Uh, uh, Mr. Pankaj Dubeji, co-founder, CEO of Power Global. Like the way he expressed in a such a simple way regarding what we need to be looking forward for, like it was something which uh, touched my heart. Then Mr. Uh, Sujay Chaudhary, uh, like the uh, uh, director CRM, Microsoft India. Like, uh, he very, uh, in a strong way put across that what exactly would be coming across and how the transformation is happening. Thank you, sir, for your wonderful insights. I would also like to thank, thank Mr. Uh, Rajiv, sir. Uh, business head uh, glance detail like who gave the practical perspectives with respect to the retail industry and definitely gave us wonderful insights and i would also like to thank mr Rob sharma vice president Clarks india for sharing valuable time and valuable insights like uh, in the end like uh, since we already are exceeding uh, our timeline i would like to thank the entire organizing team all of my uh, volunteers who have been working day in and day night like in identifying the topic for the marketing seminar which is so apt in today's scenario that uh, with the lightning speed the things are changing and we the marketers also have to evolve and in the end i will also like to thank our chairman sir like for giving us this valuable insight regarding the way forward getting into uh, this entire uh, scenario, like uh, how the marketing needs to be taking forward for. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Commander uh, Seth, sir, for the, your uh, valuable inputs in setting across the, uh, the tone of the uh, today's day. Thanks a lot. Uh, Straight away, we'll uh, enter into the uh, next session. Reshma, please take over. Uh, thank you, sir. We would be starting with the technical session one. The future is as bright as you want it to be. What should be our vis vision for 2025, our future to behold? Well, how about we add some food for the thought from the visionaries themselves? First up, I would like to welcome and introduce Mr. Vishal Manocha, sir. With 11 plus years experience in the consumer durable industry, Sir is a passionate product manager who believes in setting up the product from its core. A team player who value others' opinions and believes in implementing new ideas every day in the best possible manner. Sir is a person who believes in heart overhead. His biggest strength is to keep exploring and build an intensive relationship with people. He loves studying and deep diving into consumer psychology and hence work more towards developing innovative solutions when it comes to all four P's. Sir started his career as a sales trainee in Philips India and worked as a national KAM in e-commerce, taking this as a final assignment till 2015. Worked as an area sales manager in Haryana and Delhi, handling rural distribution, wholesale market, direct dealers and brand shops. Sir joined Hevels in India uh, Sir joined Hevels India in 2016 with the goal to launch Personal Care as their new business, Vertical, and succeeded in doing the same by 2017. His core working area and interest lies in finding innovative solutions, managing the entire product life cycle. Sir is a winner of the prestigious Philips Performance Award 2012 based on consistent performance, good presentation skills, and living up to the core values of leadership. While working at Hevels, Sir has also been awarded as the best dig digital content marketing award for launching Hevels School of Grooming. We are really honored to have you with us, sir. Thank you so much for an overwhelming introduction, I would say. You know, I'm a very simple man, to be honest, you know, uh, and who better than Ashok Sharma sir knows it. You know, this is something which I have been, you know, from my college days, I've been learning and till day, I would say, you know, I've been learning. And, you know, I, I just think that, you know, uh, and thanks to Mr. Dubey, who just presented before me, he has given me a base. You know, I, I, in fact, feel that, you know, how do I come to the level of students? You know, how do I relive my memory? How do I relive my journey? You know, when I was, as, as, was you know, as a, uh, I was in a college and was a student, you know, it's very important to think about that, you know, what matters the most right now is that, you know, everything gets created twice, you know, believe you me, everything gets created twice, first in the mind and then in the real world. Marketing for me is nothing but 
creativity how creative how innovative how intelligently and how fast you can act it becomes simply the new normal you know covid just imagine you know what it has brought to us there has been digital marketing there has been you know lot of stuff in and around that but there are certain things you know which i still feel are going to be the myths and hence let me go to the next slide and talk to you regarding those myths i want to break them believe you me i want to break them you know and just trust me uh, mr dubey said that it's all about basics let's keep talking basics basics let's keep talking learnings let's think that you know the day you end have you learned anything new be it in marketing be it in sales trust me they go hand in hand you have to be in the learning phase every now and then let me talk about the first myth which i want to break today it's digital marketing is not the only way to succeed trust me you know all of us have been believing in this fact that this is the only way which is left to succeed no i think there are many more ways this world is dynamic it's going to change there are so many new things which going to which are going to come you have to be agile you have to learn new things that's the most important thing e-commerce is the only channel which will thrive no it's not the same for me i believed in this fact when the covid was not around and when covid happened people further strengthened it that e-commerce channel is the only channel you know which is going to survive and thrive it's not the way there are many more channels which worked for me in my category not only during philips days but in hevels days also there are many other channels which are really really doing well and powering my category my product let me talk about now social media yeah so lot of us think that you know social media is the only way and mr dubey talked about that the corporates were thinking about this that you know social media in offices has to be open take my words it still date in hevels is blocked we have no access to social media because hevels as a brand still believes in the basics in the culture of the organization which is to deal with the customer first then comes everything you know if we don't make 10 to 20 calls in a day to the customer you know our day doesn't gets fulfilled so please keep in mind customer experience is the key to success hence social media is just a by product future of classroom training is in dark yes it's again a myth i still feel that you know the engagement again you know when you come in interact with mr ashok sharma and when you do it virtually there is a huge difference you know the vibes you get when you interact with the, your teachers i remember you know i have attended the classes in class the peer learning which you have is is phenomenal it can happen digitally for sure but then the vibes you get from each other when you transmit them when you come in the class are very very different trust me you know it's it's just a myth and hence i would say all these four myths please just break them out come out of your silos and be prepared for the new energetic world which is waiting for you uh i would just request deepak to move to the next slide <clears throat> yeah so let me just now cover the basics some of the basics which mr dubey again talked about you know uh ask yourself first you know are you looking for an idea yes i always look for my idea i always look for my team members that you know uh, when are they going to come across an idea every day morning we have a session on this what did our customer say yesterday in the yesterday's calls was he talking was he or she talking about something new which we have not experienced so far was there something you know which we have to exploit which we have to explore which we have to innovate you know the first thing starts from why the big why what is your big why please understand you know be it your marketing be it your sales everything starts every small decision starts from your big why and then comes your what what do you want to do in your life who and then your audience you know who are you doing it for are you doing it for yourself are you doing it for a customer and what is that customer looking for are you aware about it before you come to the product p is the first p you have to have your answers why what how who and once you are clear with this there comes an idea there comes in product there comes in service so it's very different so you know i'm just putting that in the bullet point so that you all of you are very clear how do customers behave before during and after an interaction get this answer clear trust me 99% of your problems will be solved if you know this how do customers behave before during and after an inter interaction what are the pain points you know we are talking about still the big why what are their pain points 
know, just think about that. What are their pain points? Why they're not able to gel with the product? Why they're not enjoying the product? Is there something which is missing? You know, we all see on Amazon, there are a lot of ratings and reviews which come in. You know, you pick up one of them, one of the products and just deep dive into that. And you will understand the pain points consumers highlight on these reviews. You pick up that and start working around it and see that how does the things, how the things will start changing for you. And then, you know, after you have sorted that pain point, just think about how can you alleviate their experience? Can you just provide them a flawless service? Can you just call them and pick up the phone and ask them what was that pain point and how can I solve it? Trust me, 99%, I would again repeat, your answers will come to you. What part of this can be enhanced? It's the same thing. You have to pick up those critical parts and start working on them one by one. Trust me, the things will start revolving around. That's how I work. That's how my category works. That's how have been my learnings throughout my journey. It has been a decade. Now we're today talking about the new decade, which is going to come in 2025, we are talking about. What is going to be the future of the marketing? Now, let me just do it with the help of a small case study, which will further open up your mind that, you know, how does it work? Deepak, request you to move to the next slide. Yes, I talked about this. Yes, customer experience, you know, it, it's the is the key. It, it is the pillar. Trust me, you know, around this, if you start putting all your nodes, things will dramatically change. Let's talk about the first pillar. Deepak, please press the button. Leadership, you know, all of the eminent leaders, we have seen that, you know, all of the panelists we have today are in some way or other, they're leaders in their command and they give the direction to the team. They tell them that, you know, this is the goal wherein we need to work upon. And in the goal, the customer experience, trust me, is the key. If the customer experience is getting sorted, is getting being taken care of, your goal looks absolutely clear. And that's where the leadership role, leadership thing is in sync with the pillar called customer experience. Can we move on to the next, please? Product, you know, uh, uh, just a small story, you know, I, I, in my organization, Hevels, because I gave birth to this category called personal grooming. And, you know, this became one of the talk, most talking products during lockdown. We were stuck in salons. We, we, were, we were stuck. We were not able to go to the salons. We were stuck in, in that, you know, how do we solve this problem, which is to cut the hair? to style our beard. You know, some of you youngsters, you guys, you know that, you know, it became your pain point. You were looking here and there that, you know, from where should we find this product? The agility here was that, you know, brand Hevels brings in the product, which not only trims your beard, but also cuts your hair. That was the problem which we identified and gave a product to the community. Next, please. Yeah. Now, you know, how do we connect? Hevels as a brand is on, known for its wires and cables. Hevels as a brand is known for its fans. You know, most of it, you guys must have heard about water heaters. But then have you ever heard about Hevels into grooming? Hevels having trimmers, shavers? Nobody. You know, when you hear it from the icons of this industry, which is none other than Mr. Javed Habib, Ambika Pillai, Pompey Hans, when they came on platform with us, when they started discussing and, dis and edu started educating consumers about how to use a trimmer, how to cut hair at home, DIY stuff, we conceptualized a property called Havel School of Grooming. And you know, that's where we started building a brand for ourselves. People were kind of blown off from their seats that, you know, what is this happening? How is Havel's talking about all this stuff? Coming it from the masters of the industry, it was very, very different. In itself, it's a subject. You know, if I get a chance in future, I'm going to talk about this a lot. Brand building is the key pillar when it comes to customer experience. Customer looks for a branded thing today. Trust me, you know, there is no space for many of the players, you know, who are trying to make a mark. But then, you know, if you have a branded thing available and being well encarved, well encrypted, well thought about, things are going to be very different for you. Please, Deepak, next pillar. Yeah, so, you know, anything to do with, be it the product, be it the brand, you know, till the time your IT infrastructure is in place, till the time your other structures are in place, it is very difficult for you to kind of ensure that, you know, your infrastructure, without your infrastructure, your customer experience is going to be very difficult. Take my words, you have to work upon this. Last, uh, sorry, second last pillar. Can we go to the next, please, Deepak? Channel, you know, uh, uh, e-commerce, I talked about that. E-commerce is something, you know, which everybody's looking up to. But imagine 
a category like he like Hevel's personal care, where there is a 50% share of e-commerce, but trust me, rest of the 50% from where does it come? It comes from supermarkets. It comes from cosmetic channel. It comes from, you know, pharmaceutical shops. Look at the opportunity which lockdown has created. We, we were never present on the cosmetic stores. We were never present on the pharmaceutical stores, but this trimmer demand, you know, allowed us to enter to a new space, which is supermarkets, pharmaceuticals, chemists. This channel is again, your go-to market strategy has to be absolutely spot on when it comes to customer experience. The product availability has to be ensured. Last, Deepak. Yes, the services, you know, when you call and when you think that, you know, my trimmer has certain problems, how do I learn about it? The first thing which comes to your mind is the service center. Imagine Hevel's giving a home service for trimmer. That's what we did. We had a 24 hours to 48 hours window. You call us and here we come to you and give you a delivery, give you a service at home. That was what created this whole category for us. And Deepak, can you just move to the next? Deepak, next, please. Yeah, so number two brand in three years, you know, this is what we have created. Look at the imagination. Look at the basics we have stitched. It's just basic. You've been reading about it. Now, number two brand in three years and a hundred crore of revenue. Doesn't that sound magical? It's all possible with your self-belief and self-esteem. If you believe, if you empower people, things will turn for you. Next, Deepak, please. I need to finish in five minutes. I got an alarm from Ashok sir now. <laughs> right. So, okay. So future looks to be exciting, guys. You know, trust me, I, I wanted to burst these myths now. And then simply, for me, it's not digital marketing anymore. It's digital marketing. It's physical plus digital, which you need to learn, guys. Be focused. Learn both physical and digital. You are into college. You are the future builders of the community. Hence, don't miss on physical. E-commerce is not only channel, it's O2O, offline to online and vice versa. Both will work. When trimmers were not selling from e-commerce, we had supermarkets. When supermarkets were not functioning, we had, you know, e-commerce. Look at the way the mix was getting managed. That was, that was the key thing which worked for us. Social media, it's not the only thing. I think social media is there to remain for a long, long time. But network marketing is something that I believe is going to be the turning point when it comes to, let's say, I will not talk about 2025. I would say that little away from here, 2023, 24, network marketing is going to create a lot of buzz because there is a lot of relationship building which is required in this piece. Future of classroom, I would sum up in simply four words. These are the new modern four A's of marketing. Forget about four P's, learn these four A's life is going to change. Agility, affordability, accessibility, and awareness. How do you do this and see the magic happening around you? That's the key thing. Last but not the least, can I move to the next slide so that we can finish it and wrap it? Guys, please just make a note of it. You need to acquire these seven vital skills to empower yourself. You, you are going to be the future leaders. Hence, if you don't acquire these seven skills, take my note. You're not going to make it in the top list of the leaders, if you want to be a CEO, if you want to be an entrepreneur, if you want to build a mastery, please work on copywriting, email writing, then high ticket closing, chatbot marketing, sales funnel, investing, meditation and wellness. These are the seven skills which are going to remain with you for next, I don't know how many years, but you need to acquire them. Very important for you. Last, Deepak. Yes, discover entrepreneurship is the key for you guys. Perfection is just a perception. Nobody can be perfect. Not me, not my team, not Hevels, not any other top brand. It's about exploration, idea creation, why, what, and who. If you remember that, ideas will flourish. Entrepreneurship will create, and we need entrepreneurs. And I, I am promising you, if you start working on this, we will have a lot of entrepreneurs with us in the community. With this, thank you so much. Love you all. With the beautiful thought that everything is created twice and linking this thought with marketing, marketing is nothing less than iconic. From the vision of always searching ideas to breaking myths, we thank you for taking your time to speak to us, sir, and having such an informative session. Following on the panel, we have Mr. Abhay Gupta, sir, 
Sir is the founder and CEO, Luxury Connect, advisor and mentor to luxury brands, professor of luxury management, speaker, author, mentor, and a certified Marshall Goldsmith coach. With over three decades of experience in the luxury industry, Sir has always been associated with luxury and premium brands in India. Sir has helped, brand, helped brands like Versace, Conliani, just to name a few, to set up businesses in India and scale up to new heights. An engineering and management generalist with special skills acquired in luxury style, lifestyle development and retail in India. Sir is a pioneer in the luxury industry, has been guiding premium and luxury brands across a wide cross-section of product categories ranging from apparels, accessories, furniture, interiors, mobiles, fragrances, and much more. His thought leadership in the industry has led him to associate with some of the most prominent brands across the world and set up multi-millionaire dollar luxury businesses in India. We are pleased to have you with us, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Roshni. That was a kind introduction. Thank you, Dr. Ashok Sharma, for searching me out, inviting me, and insisting that I come and talk to the students. So I've had an early association with James uh, Rohini when I did a special uh, subject for them on luxury retail. If you permit me, uh, very quickly, because Ashok wants me to be very fast, I will need some screen, screen sharing rights so that I can explain to the students as to what really luxury is and what is the future of luxury in India. Uh, it's still disabled, Ashok. Uh, yes, sir, we are doing it. Sure. So you may please share your screen now. Okay. I hope it's visible. Yes, sir. Right. Okay, students, this is a, so there is a technical lag, I think there's a, okay. So before we go into the future of luxury in India, I'm just going to run you through very quickly in terms of understanding luxury. You see what uh, the previous speaker spoke about brand. I want to insist here that luxury only rests on branding and branding is the key uh, manifesto of luxury. So if one is interested in the luxury business, one really needs to go to the highest level of branding. So I'm just going to run you through quickly in terms of understanding luxury because there is a lot of myth around what is luxury because today everyone and almost everyone claims that I am luxury. So I'll take a few moments to explain to you what is luxury. Luxury is basically the world of the privilege, but in order to make it simple for you, I went to Google, like what would you guys do? And you'd be surprised that I came across some 201 crore results in 0.69 seconds. So if you have that many definitions of luxury, Understanding and serving luxury becomes even more complicated, which means that every customer has a different perception about uh, luxury, unlike cable trimmers, that everyone wants of the same need in, 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 uh, in a cable trimmer. So uh, some of the key definitions I noted for you guys, it says a great state of comfort or elegance, especially when involving great expense. Please pay attention to the underlying keywords. An inessential desirable item which is expensive or difficult to obtain or a pleasure obtained only rarely. So if these are the keywords, what really is luxury? I'm going to show you a few pictures and maybe perhaps you will agree with me that these are considered generally luxury by all of us. Would you consider these, any of these luxury? I'm sure most of you would. How about this? Or how about this? Or how about this? Or this? Or even this? And you'll be surprised that this is all happening all around us. It is not rocket science, but this is all happening very much within India. So we can summarize and define luxury with several keywords. So luxury is a state of comfort. Luxury believes in acute craftsmanship. Luxury believes in exclusivity, believes in affluence, believes in opulence, believes in grandeur. It's most expensive, it is most magnificent, and it is most indulgent. But at the same time, a definition given by Coco Chanel says, luxury is a necessity that begins where necessity ends. Please pay attention, it's a necessity. 
So marketing believes of servicing a need, but in luxury, we are not servicing a need. We are, we are beginning to serve people where the need has ended and a desire has begun. So trying to service a desire is extremely difficult. Coco Chanel also made another statement. She says that some people think luxury is the opposite of poverty. It is not. It is the opposite of vulgarity. So when you talk of being elegant, when we talk of being sophisticated, sophisticated, then we talk of dealing with the luxury space and dealing with the luxury uh, environment. So let's quickly understand luxury, the past and the present, because we are talking of what is the future of luxury in India. So I just want to bring you guys to to part to understand that India is not new to luxury. Some facts out here. India is stressed with luxury. This is a special necklace made by the brand Cartier for the Maharaja of Patiala. And that's a picture of him wearing it. It's an outstanding necklace still available in the Cartier Museum. Those are some facts about that Cartier it is, uh, a necklace. It's called the Collier de Patiala. It consists of the biggest single diamond which is weighing about, the necklace weighs about 962 carats. So you can imagine it's nearly about 1,000 carats. And all these gems belonged to the king then, King Bupinder Singh. And it was given to Cartier to design into a particular necklace. Then this is a picture of a Louis Vuitton trunk. So everyone knows Louis Vuitton because for the past 15 odd years it's been present in India. But these are trunks which are specially designed for our Maharajas when they used to go on their travel journeys, they were made for a size that they could enter into the private trains. You can see that the door is expandable to receive this particular trunk. And the kings used to carry their attire as well as their hunting arsenal into a vertical format. So Maharaj Jagjit Singh was the avid follower of uh, Louis Vuitton. And in fact, he was one of the biggest customers. To date, his descendants are the brand ambassadors for Louis Vuitton worldwide. Next, you can see this uh, particular slipper. You might believe that it's something which is done now by Sabisachi and Krishna Louis Vuitton, but no, this was specially done for the Maharani Devi, Indra Devi of Kuch Bihar. It was done in by Faragamo in 1938, specially customized for her. So you see, India has not been new to luxury. So we can conclude that back then, luxury was only for the aristocrats. It was only for the kings and queens, but now, it is not restricted to the elite only. It is accessible to the common man. All of us, but into certain fraction of luxury is available to us. If we can't buy it, we can rent it. So today luxury is almost available to everyone. And hence, servicing or marketing to a luxury consumer becomes extremely challenging because the variety of customers that you may have to serve, despite the segmentation that you learn, is going to be really, really huge. Generally higher economic background, of course, all of this you understand. So luxury has been theoretically positioned as the highest pillar because you see here from necessity to basic to affluent to luxury. So Adam Smith had said that luxury goods in limited supply are difficult to procure and or very expensive. You see the aspirational value of luxury is what makes it sell. So the biggest role for a luxury marketeer is to create the aspiration all the time because it is something which is not essential but it is desirable. And a desire has no definition or has no end. How do we segment the industry? It's segmented into personal luxury goods. This is only to showcase to you that how wide the circle of luxury is or other luxury goods. And you see it runs into items which normally one would not believe of that there are yachts parked in Bombay and parked in Cochin which begin at about six crores upward. Then there are cars which you see the best of the cars are available in India today starting at two crores upwards hospitality, real estate, fine dining, all those I don't need to explain to you. But you see the circle of luxury has invaded almost any and every sector that one can think of, which makes us believe that employment opportunities for young people like you is available in your area of interest. How is luxury branded? Because everything in luxury stands around branding. So as management students, you must have been learning about positioning and you must have been talking about competition mapping and you must have been hearing of segmenting, et cetera, et cetera. But in luxury, the branding goes to an ultimate level. The same principles of 4P, 7P, 8P are applied in a different format because luxury believes that we are the only one to satisfy your desire. Since it is not a need-based marketing, it is a desire-based marketing. One needs to position or one needs to communicate that I am the only one to service your desire. It's like you cannot compare a Shah Rukh Khan and Amir Khan. Likewise, you cannot compare a BMW with an Audi. 
both of them are equally good luxury brands but someone who likes bmw will not like an audi and and so on let's try to understand the size of the global luxury industry the size of the industry exceeding 1.8 trillion dollars and these are figures pre covid of course during covid it has taken a 20% hit worldwide but i'll show you some statistics for india in the next slide industry has been delivering a healthy 5% growth year on year for for the past several years now overall number of consumers has increased from 140 million to 350 million new demand from india south korea and taiwan contributing to strong performance i can say it with conviction because my association in luxury started in the in the year 1991 when the first brand came to india which was lacoste so i am perhaps perhaps the oldest living professional in the luxury space how about the indian luxury market india's market is maturing slowly but surely good sales in india is growing at the rate of 20% per annum for the past several years i have i have been a witness to this growth i would say ever since luxury penetrated india the number of millionaires indian household is growing by 70% ranking 8th now luxury has gone from metro cities to tier 2 tier 3 cities and all of you know that it is now available in kanpur it is available in bangalore it is available in i mean almost all the corners of india luxury is available in some form or the or other that's a graph at which luxury has been going in india it's just been plotted since 2009 onwards where it was only 4.8 billion dollars but in 2018 it was already 30 billion dollars and estimated to be 180 billion by 2025 of course these are pre covid uh, figures this is supported by a statement by amitabh kant amitabh kant in a luxury conference in march 2016 said that market has the potential to grow from 18.5 billion at that point in time in 2016 to 50 billion by 2020 and 180 billion by 2025 so now the the projection is already coming to 200 billion by 2030 so figures are changing luxury is ra rapidly growing and all of you know that amitabh kant has access to all kinds of figures which you and i do not have he knows what goods are being imported he knows what gst is being deposited he knows what income tax is being paid by each and every individual he knows what each brand's earning in india is he also knows all indian brands and he also knows all international brands so he is one person who has access to any and every information that may be there prevalent in india today so he is probably in the best position to make a statement like that try to link this with the current government's vision of a 5 trillion economy by 2025 of course the covid is going to slow that down that down a bit but we do we do all know that despite the covid we are already back on track now in q4 and uh, q3 and q4 and we are looking at 11% gdp growth in the coming financial year, coming financial years so five trillion economy means all of us makes more money and when we make more money we want better things for ourselves our parents our children etc covid and luxury let's understand what has covid done to luxury and india despite uncertain economic market ultra rich indians wealth has grown this is as on 260221 by a magazine called lux book it has grown by 59% some more statistics art luxury art and hermes handbags remain high on shopping list of ultra hnis night frank report on 0101 21 Sorry, the zero one zero three twenty one. It's a wrong mistake here. India adds forty billionaires during the pandemic. This is Economic Times on zero three zero three twenty one. One billionaire every ten days. India's twenty count. Economic Times zero three zero three twenty one. This itself tells you that the market for luxury is growing because people are making money. Not you and me, but there are people beyond us which are making money. Globally, luxury sales are expected to suffer year and year decline of twenty five percent to thirty percent. that is from pre covid levels market is likely to recover in two schematics for 21 and forward this is a global graph which has been done by bain and company and if you look very carefully the rapid rebound area is china and asia and half of japan so what is believed is in 2020 it you know we had a surge called revenge shopping in in countries like china also in india there has been a revenge shopping in items like jewelry and handbags and cars etc where it has peaked and then it is going to take a shape like this where it will beyond 2021 and beyond it is going to rise very very quickly whereas in the other parts of the world which is america and europe it has taken a dip 
and that's where the global luxury market has dropped by 25%. Going forward, it is India and China or Asia as a market where the rapid growth is being projected. Some statistics and some facts because we want to understand what's going to happen in 2025. So this is what has happened that there is a digital disruption of luxury. So all that the previous speakers spoke about in terms of e-commerce, so the rapid pace of e-commerce, you know, it is believed that 10 years of technological space, pace has happened in the last one year. Those are the statistics which are happening. Uh, artificial intelligence, virtual reality, all that you already know, you don't need to discuss. There is a shift towards digital shopping. Shopping did not shop, uh, stop during COVID. So video walkthroughs was very, very common and merchandise was being sent to the HNI's homes for their selection. Changes in store operating procedures, more fulfillment than shopping. So stores are becoming more of a fulfillment space rather than shopping space because the digital discovery of the product is being carried out during the initial information or the, you know, the consumer buying journey you know already. So during the discovery stage, everything is happening uh, digitally. And then people are going to the store to zip in and zip out uh, with their shortlisted product. And all of that is being done in advance through video. Shows without live audiences. So during the pandemic, all the fashion shows, all the, uh, what should you say, the buyer seller meets, the trade shows, they all got canceled. And most of those shows are happening without live audiences. Everything is happening digitally. Although I must share with you that uh, come October, Milan and Paris are going back to part live and part digital. So only a few selected people will be invited for the shows, which was originally the process. Retail tech gains importance where predictive analytics, I don't know how many, how much of you guys are aware, but today it is predicted because I heard one of the previous speaker talk about the Royal Enfield case study. It is a fact that today we can predict anything and everything in terms of what are you going to need? When are you going to need? How much quantity are you going to need? Your fridge is getting connected to Amazon and Amazon is monitoring your purchase patterns and ordering the eggs or bread or butter before your fridge shelf is empty. So that kind of retail technology has already moved in. Artificial intelligence, virtual reality, 3D holographic. So the next phase is that instead of a video graphic, uh, a video walkthrough, you will have a 3D of the customer coming to the store or a 3D of the retail sales associate going to the customer's home with the product. So these are realities at an advanced stage of innovation. Uh, all of you perhaps know that when, when Prime Minister Modi got elected for the first time, he used 3D holographic, holographic to speak parallelly to all over the world. Heightened environment and social consciousness. So new development which has taken place now is that more and more customers are looking at what is the brand or the company offering to the environment? Uh, people are getting socially conscious as to what is the manufacturing process doing to the environment? How much water is being wasted? You, you, you would be surprised to know that maximum water is wasted in manufacturing of fashion. So fast fashion brands like Azara, H&M, these are the brands which are, are suffering. It is not luxury which is suffering. In fact, luxury always offered highest value which you could carry from one generation to another. So people are going back to more classic products rather than fast fashion products. Quality over quantity is the new mantra. So people are not looking at buying 20 white shirts. They want to buy one white shirt, which is the best and which can be carried forward for many years. Sustainability beyond lip service. So uh, I hope you guys are aware that in the earlier days or the pre-COVID days, every brand claimed that I'm sustainable, but today, the question is that the customer is wanting to go into your production journey and wants to really understand, are you a sustainable product or are you not a sustainable product? Hence, today what you have rent a product, sharing economy is suffering because people are scared of COVID infection carry forward. So the Uber cabs and Ola cabs, they are facing their own challenges and small cars are coming back. People are buying their personal vehicles. So sharing eco economy, which was which was growing at a very, very fast pace is facing its own challenges. Ethics is becoming as important as it was always. So aesthetics, just looking good is not important. How good are you inside? Internal goodness is now being given a lot of importance, which means the purpose of the brand is now becoming important. So the four P's of marketing are changing and the most important P is now becoming the purpose of the brand. Strengthen local pride. So you have all heard about local, vocal for local. 
So more and more brands and more and more customers and more and more companies have realized that it is our colony grocer which has taken care of us during the pandemic and it is not the big basket or the Amazon which is taken care of. So people want to support local brands have realized that we cannot support, we cannot depend on imported goods to come in for us to finish our product. So more and more local sourcing is taking place, giving rise to increased employment for SMEs and what the previous speaker said about entrepreneurship. So local pride is becoming extremely important. Expanding the need for inclusion. So all of you know that today LGBTQ is also a recognized race. So more and more inclusivity is being brought into luxury with respect to not only your gender, but with respect to your, let's say, special abilities. So people with special abilities, clothes are being designed and made or products are being designed and made for people with special abilities. No more are they being not included in the mainstream. Rise in fulfillment. So increased use of autonomous deliveries. As you know, autonomous cars and drone deliveries has, has, is becoming common. It has become experimented. It's not yet allowed in India due to security reasons, but it will come in very, very quick. Smart sensors, I gave you an example about Amazon and the fridge, and you, I'm sure all of you know the Amazon Go model, where you walk in, walk out, walk out without standing in any queue for payments. Everything is happening through beacons and through smart technology. Your, your phone is being debited for the, uh, for the amount of money. Blockchain tracking, so blockchain is helping in counterfeiting, anti-counterfeiting efforts by luxury. Major investments are going into blockchain uh, uh, management. Digital twinning to increase delivery speeds, efficiency. So digital twinning, I explained once to you saying about 3D holographic. More and more luxury brands have realized that people do not want to come into the store. So today you can create a digital avatar, which you can do like you're doing in Facebook. But luxury brands are also going into gaming because that is what the Gen Z in China is doing. The younger part of Gen Z is in, living in the cross intersection of e social commerce, e-commerce, as well as gaming. So all of that is now happening through games where you as a player can create your 3D avatar and then you can, you can dress up your 3D avatar in your favorite brand. It could be a Philip Van Usen or it could be a Rolf Lauren or it could be a Versace. You could dress him up, play that game and then decide this is the dress that I want for myself. So that kind of smart technology has been brought in. Pre-loved commerce or second-hand commerce will see a renewed revival. So while one side we are saying the sharing economy is suffering, but pre-loved commerce, that means used luxury or pre-used luxury, which was prevalent earlier only in cars, is today being seen in bags, it's being seen in, in watches, it's being seen even in higher value clothing. Because after all, if you buy a gown which is costing 25 lakhs, you have only perhaps one or two occasions to wear it and you can't wear it again because it, it makes you stand out. So even the rich are looking at how can I get off rid of that particular clothing? Hence, pre-loved commerce is, is, is big worldwide. Social commerce is gaining prominent, prominence. So what you're seeing as WhatsApp commerce is a very, very small form, format of social commerce. But if you do case studies on brands or names like a Pinot Dudu in, in China, you will find that social commerce where referral incentives are being driven so that what you buy is going to influence what your friends are going to buy. So from a macro influencer, people are looking at micro influencers. No more influencers with millions of followers are welcome. What is welcome is people like you and me who may have 5,000 followers because it's a closed loop sales cycle that branding and marketing are looking out for. Meaning and purpose of brands will weigh over brand name and reputation. So as I said, purpose of the brand, the Gen Z, the younger part of the Gen Z is looking at the purpose of the brand and giving importance to the purpose of the brand and questioning that, why should I pay this money just because you're Gucci? I want to understand what is behind the product, even if you're not a Gucci. So it's becoming suddenly very, very important for all the brands to have a, a vision which is more sustainable, which is more purpose driven. Return of the traditional and classic luxury, as I said, so people don't want to buy things which are frivolous and people are going back to experiential luxury goods, fine art because this lasts a lifetime and the value appreciates luxury cars because they are rare. And if you, if you look at the statistics uh, during pandemic, you will find that luxury cars yesterday, uh, Urs, which is a, which is a SUV by Lamborghini 
has completed 100 cars. They sold 100 Lamborghini, Lamborghini SUVs during the pandemic. Private jets and yachts, because people don't want to fly anymore, even in business class, there is a rise on hiring of private jets or time-sharing jets. Yachts are seeing renewed because you can't go for a holiday to Moscow anymore because it is crowded. So people are buying their own yachts and going away with their 20, 25 key family members. Fine wine, spirits, et cetera, et cetera, are seeing an uprise because people realize kal ho na ho, so might as well enjoy today. That's where uh, more classic products, the best is being sought after. Little bit about us. So as, as I was introduced, I created a company called Luxury Connect in 2012, and that's what we do. We are into strategy and business advisory services only for the luxury business, but we go on the entire value chain and we also help in the talent management services. Those are the three properties that we have. Luxury Connect is into all these uh, uh, management activities. Uh, LCBS is our training, is our B school, which is into talent management and Luxury Crux is into carrying out analytics, insights, news trends, and we release reports around luxury every year. In fact, we were the only ones to report, uh, to release a report on COVID and impact on Indian luxury, which was carried by Forbes India. And that's our B school. We are nine years, uh, nine years of reshaping the luxury skill landscape of India. And I'm proud to say that some of our students are uh, in big names like Rolex, Lamborghini CMO is my student. Rolex Boutique is headed by my student. Uh, Pink Floyd is, you know, so several names. You think of uh, any name, my students are there. We are India's first and only luxury business school located in Gurgaon, and we offer several programs. Our brands, which work with us for the talent, consulting, and or recruitment, and you can see that it grows across industry sectors. So what was not mentioned to you during the introduction was that I have, I have been awarded the luxury retail icon for 2012. And what uh, Mr. Dubey, I think Pankaj Dubey was part of the top 100 for 2016. I've been for top 100 for Indian luxury for seven years, ranging from 2013 to 2020. So seven years in a row, I have been part of the top 100 in Indian luxury. And last but not the least, last year I released this book, which is called The Incredible Indian Luxury Bazaar. It tells you anything and everything about Indian luxury past, present, future, what is the uh, success strategy which a brand should adopt, Indian luxury consumers, because that's all the study that we have carried out. It's been compiled, it's the first book which has compiled anything and everything about Indian luxury. You can go online on Amazon and you can get a copy for yourself, or you can reach out to us if you want. Those are our properties, uh, social media, we're very active and thank you very much. I'm open for questions. Thank you, Dr. Ashok Sharma once again for inviting me. Marketing serves luxury where necessity ends. This session sure did change our definition of luxury and how complicated and subjective the concept is. Thank you for speaking with us, sir. We are very grateful for your time and effort. Thank you. Next on the panel, um, sir, you were speaking something? No, I just said thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Next on the panel, we have Dr. Pramod Joshi, sir. Sir holds a BTEC in electronics engineering from IIT Varanasi. MTech in Electronic Engineering from IIT Kanpur, a PGDM from IIM Bangalore, and a PhD from the Department of Finance and Business Economics, University of Delhi. Sir has spent his working career of over 40 years almost equally in the fields of industry and higher education. In his first innings, he was a part of India's nascent information technology industry in the 80s and 90s and rotated himself through technical software development roles as well as management roles in human resources, finance and sales, and marketing. After completing his PGDM from IIM Bangalore, Sir worked in Tata Unisys for about nine years, rising to the level of regional manager for Eastern USA and Canada, and then joined a tech startup in Los Angeles. Before returning to India in 1998 to head its Indian operations, started in Noida under his guidance. In his second innings, he chose to focus his attention on the huge unemployability issue facing the country and co-founded a soft skills mentoring firm called The Winning Mantra. Over the last 18 years, the company has impacted the lives of nearly 30,000 students across several campuses through training, mentoring, and assessment. Sir has been a co-founder, project director, advisor, and consultant to several universities, technical institute, and business schools such as NITS Mirza, Shivnada University, GLA University, Indus University, 
Beamtech, etc. He is also passionate about guiding and mentoring young startups and guiding them through their early entrepreneurship journey. We are very obliged to have your presence on this virtual, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much for that warm welcome. And uh, I've been here since 10 a.m. listening to all the speakers. It's been a great learning journey for me, along with all the students who are present here. I just wanted to check before I proceed, um, you know, the two typical questions, am I audible and am I visible? Uh, so you sure are audible and visible. Thank you so much. If things deteriorate because I am on vacation and I am, you know, in Bangalore uh, staying uh, with my daughter for a few days, I don't have my home Wi-Fi. So if things deteriorate, I will switch off my video and uh, try and do justice just through the audio, if that's okay. So if I can get uh, sharing rights uh, to the PowerPoint I wanted to share, can I get share screening, uh, screen sharing rights? Okay, I so think I have all them. the participants do have okay. the... Yes, yes, I have them. Uh, yeah, just one minute. Let me go to the PowerPoint, yeah. Okay, so uh, this is, can you see my screen now? Uh, yes, sir, the screen is visible. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you. No more questions from my. My side, uh, the rest of the questions can come from a little quicker because uh, we sir? are running behind time on uh, some of these slides, which are very, very. Yeah. So sorry to interrupt Hello. you, sir, but I think you might have to switch off Hello? your video because your audio is interrupting. Yeah, yeah, I'm about to do that. Thank you for interrupting. Thanks. Okay, am I audible now? Better? Sorry. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So very quickly, this slide was just to, you know, put some of my thoughts on the table before I get started on the subject. The future is bright is what the theme of this technical uh, session is. Uh, the future is arriving faster and looking nimbler every day. So the speed at which the future is knocking at our doorstep has been going up. I think that's a no-brainer. Everybody knows that. 15 years ago, nobody could have thought the kind of changes to e-commerce that uh, would have happened in these, these last 15 years. I remember when I lived in Los Angeles back in 97, I attended a very key technology summit, which was hosted by Microsoft. And when Microsoft there presented uh, how the future of e-commerce will go up to a couple of billion dollars. There were many smirks in the audience. But within three years of that conference, that number had been exceeded by about five times. So clearly, we run the risk of underestimating the speed at which the future is arriving. Is going to be technology-driven. It's already technology-driven, but the whole concept of technology is changing. Uh, uh, more robotic, more AI, ML, so less human intervention, much smarter machine intervention is going to happen in the coming five years. Clearly global. I think the internet has flattened the world and now uh, consumers sitting in Hoshangabad might be this curious. There is nothing to stop uh, that person to go and look for information. Uh, the future is equally head and heart. So the intellect is going to be very, very prized as well as empathy for others. I think we are seeing a lot of this happening during the lockdown. Uh, we saw that uh, people who uh, dealt with the problem with both head, head and heart were uh, given a lot of respect by society. The future is going to be more chaotic and more unpredictable. It has, it has always been unpredictable, but I think that element is going to be higher. Uh, the future is going to be about finding method in madness. There's a lot of chaos, but smart managers, smart marketing managers, smart logistics uh, managers, uh, smart HR managers are going to be able to find method in that madness. And finally, the future is going to be shaped to some extent by our past and present. The present mainly because that's where we um, design uh, risk mitigation strategies and also 
uh, scan the opportunities coming down the road. Uh, Pankaj ji, a good friend, talked about it. You know, he talked about how he was able to anticipate the future of telecom and then the future of uh, high quality automobiles. And uh, there are other speakers who talked about being able to shape the future based on what you do today. So with that, I move on uh, to the theme in which I'm going to be speaking. Uh, just to keep things a little more interesting, I'm going to have a slide uh, which will only talk about one word as a challenge. Uh, that's based on my perception. Uh, things uh, might be different from the perception of the audience, but that's based on my perception. So I'll use one word to denote a challenge facing marketers of the future. And I'm also going to have another slide with a couple of questions which will act like triggers for the thinkers in this room. I don't have the answers to these questions, but if you start thinking, the people out there in the audience, uh, whether they are students or faculty or researchers, hopefully they will get some questions that they can deal and uh, deal with and go down deeper into. So that's my first challenge word, attention. Attention is going A customer today is far more challenged on this one word. There is too much happening around them. And this is, in a way, to borrow uh, from the previous speaker, attention is becoming a luxury. So here are some strategy questions for students to think about. Uh, in the coming years, how do I get my marketing message to stick when the consumer is so fickle in his attention? This is what you कि आने वाले समय में जब अटेंशन की इतनी कमी है अटेंशन स्पैन इतना छोटा है तो हाउ विल यू गो अबाउट मेकिंग योर मैसेज स्टिकियर अनदर क्वेश्चन दैट यू कुड मे बी पोज टू योरसेल्फ हाउ टू मेक लेस डू मोर बिकॉज़ द कस्टमर इज नॉट गोइंग टू गिव यू मोर अटेंशन दे आर ओनली गिविंग यू लेसर अटेंशन सो हाउ कैन यू मेक दैट मिनिस्क्यूल अमाउंट ऑफ अटेंशन काउंट फॉर मोर that could be one question. So these may actually help you define the strategies of the future. From 21, 22, 25, some of the things that are you know, going to revolve around attention, if you can start strategizing today, asking these questions, I think you may get some answers or at least you will get some areas of further research. Will customers need to be transported to new physical experiences? Because today's attention span is getting challenged due to the digital world we have moved into. Do you think there'll be a backlash? And do you think we will have to take customers to physical experiences, uh, maybe to a resort? You take a few customers and uh, they, they are influence, uh, influencers on digital media, but they love getting their hands dirty. So maybe you get them a physical experience that they can never forget in their life. And maybe that's how you make less do more in this world. So that's my first word and first set of strategy questions. Uh, just going to take one quick break and ask, is this making sense? Yes, sir. Okay. My next word is trust. I have picked these words out of the living experience of the last few years. As a marketer, as a managing director, as the founder of a company, as a trainer, as a transfer mentor, so I'm using these words out of sheer experience. Uh, there may be a lot of um, research work that's gone on, but I have not really gone into the research papers dealing with these words. So my challenge word to the marketers of the future is trust. And the strategy questions around that one word trust is, the first question is, is the new null hypothesis anchored around no trust? You know, normally when we went to school, when we went out into society, we all operated from the null hypothesis that people are trustworthy. You know, there are states that you go to or villages that you go to. I come from the Uttarakhand. You know, there are places where people only believe uh, in the goodness of others and they don't even lock their houses. There is so much trust. But I think over the last 20, 30 years, high consumerism, high competition, I think the null hypothesis today people are operating from is that there is no trust. So you first have to get past that. So there is a trust deficit issue. It is happening not just with people. It's happening with organizations. It is happening with governments. 
there was a time when you could trust the government to speak the truth and now one has to keep questioning social media has been a huge tax on our trust there are there are news items that you believe and then somebody points out that it is all concocted have to work in a world where trust is uh, again a commodity that is not easy to a master so that is one question i think there is a small problem with my connection so i'm going to be a little slower um a question that you could ask around strategy for marketing and advertising could be this how will my messaging be impacted by this ubiquitous trust deficit when i wherever i look around i am finding it difficult to trust people that's true of all will my messaging still be of the 1990s or 2000s or it will have to do something to overcome this trust deficit will honesty and integrity be back as usps normally we take them as granted but maybe in the next 4 to 5 years people who try and focus on this whether it's in uh, the like somebody talked about the you know pre uh, search or the search experience the in store experience and then the use experience so maybe in every element of those interactions the moments of truth one will have to indeed focus on this and maybe that becomes your usp as a brand so that's my second word and second set of questions my third word is technology something that's been talked about a lot in today's um, sessions and also in the past seminars that i have attended so it's been actually overused but for good reasons the questions that i want to pose for the young marketers of today and the future are these will consumer behavior something that we study and we you know do case studies on will that get dumber as ai takes over buying decisions people don't have attention spans so they are going to outsource some of the buying decisions to some engines and they will go very quickly from consideration to a buying decision maybe not all of them but that is a trend technology is bringing in so you as young students must must not take technology for granted you must see what impact that technology is going to have on the consumer will there be a tech backlash there are many people i know who are saying you know get detox yourself get out of this constant digital existence and there may be a section who may be willing and be happy to give up this onrush of technology so that could be another question from a strategic standpoint when we talk of challenges challenges are being denoted by a single word but when it comes to strategies i am using triggers that are posed in the form of questions will we reach a technology plateau soon as far as you know i am an electronics engineer so there is always a limit to every technology and then you move to the next orbit so quantum computing is now going to become more commercialized as we reach the limits of uh, silicon technology right so we have to keep asking ourselves uh, is it going to plateau out in 2025 or 2030 maybe the bio the bio aspects of technology are now going to get in uh, there will be more in implantation more uh, you know uh, the 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 interface between human and machines will actually enter the body it is already beginning to happen at a lower scale but maybe by 2025 it will be taken for granted and beyond that what do you do is that a plateau do you have to go to another orbit so that's my third word technology and the strategy questions that come from that my fourth word is lifestyle a lot has been and very interestingly spoken so i am not going to spend time on the except posing the questions okay i think um, the previous speaker also spoke about how the latest consumers how are they experiencing a lot more and they are you know living um, uh, they they are digital natives so they are actually living life on this digital edge all the time so will they get jaded very quickly in their lives that could be a question that you have to ask when putting out your marketing strategy will small is beautiful guide consumer choices in a world ravaged by cataclysmic natural events we have seen some huge events the pandemic that we have been uh, suffering from or or at least you know seeing the after effects of 
has been huge in terms of its global impact. There are regional events like maybe a glacier breaking off and causing flash floods, or there are other, you know, forest fires in Malibu, California. So many consumers may decide to give up scale and go back. There's also a you know trend about tiny homes. People are wanting to live in tiny homes that they build by themselves. So this is another lifestyle choice that may be impacting the future. Family relationships. Now, you know, in many of the earlier marketing literature, you looked at consumer buying behavior and you talked about how a son could, uh, you know, influence the buying decision of the parent or the parent could do vice versa. But we are finding that family relationships are, I think, going a little bit into the background and uh, youngsters are relying more on friends and also what may not be called friends, but are alliances of a temporary kind, a complex kind, a transactional kind. So we may need to start thinking about our strategic choices from a marketing standpoint based on, the, on this one word, lifestyle. The last word I'm going to use, the fifth and the final one, is humor. And I'm going to pose questions around humor as follows. From a strategic standpoint, will the world of marketing use humor? Because today's world is humorless. It has become full of stresses. People have lost jobs. People have had to reskill. People have had to look at life from a different prism. And so there are new stresses and new tensions in consumers. So will humor be used in the future to bring a little succor to those people, uh, to, to those people who are uh, you know, ravished by these new stresses and tensions. So that's one question. Will satire, political humor, and caricature be new tools of communication to get your message across? It is already happening. It is already happening in advertising where you often go to some extreme lengths to satirize a lifestyle or a satirize a consumer. Uh, and then, then I think uh, if you look at uh, one of these ads of uh, Five Star, I think, where a young boy is seen totally apathetic, totally, you know, uh, do indulge uh, in indulging himself in the Five Star chocolate. I mean, that's kind of a humor. And then you are trying to make that mainstream, not helping somebody, an old lady. Uh, so, so this kind of a marketing messaging is going to possibly be seen in the future. Will laughter in experiential settings be the way into a customer's wallet? People have seen a lot of Zoom. In fact, this seminar is a good example. Uh, many students might actually be logged in, but they are doing other things because they have had an overdose. of Zoom and uh, you know Google Meets and all that. So into, I covered that point a little bit earlier, but I'm here. I have just used five words and uh, some questions, three questions each. And uh, I'm going to now switch to the second part of my presentation. Maybe it'll take about three minutes. Uh, consumer testimonials are going to be extremely important in the coming years. I think people, because of the trust deficit issue, the attention gap issue, people are going to believe something that resonates with them right away. And therefore, I'm going to take you uh, to some testimonials. Uh, there is one testimonial that I got just now, uh, which is from a friend of mine in the US. He is the founder and CEO of a company that I mentor. And uh, he just shared a testimonial from a buyer. Uh, actually, my friend is a part of a software company which makes uh, mobile-based applications for car dealerships. So the Mercedes USA is standardized on that. BMW USA is standardized on that application. So he shared one testimonial where one Brian Carpizo, founder and CEO of a company says, was on the receiving end of a fantastic digital experience with auto repair, pickup and status was all done through text and then a very useful video of the inspection. So here is a customer of a car who went to the dealership who experienced this software product and wrote a testimonial, which the CEO is now sharing. So it is important to understand that testimonials, if they are concocted, if they are made up, they are going to lose credibility and trust. But if they are real and you can actually feel them, now that's where the future is going to be bright. If you can collect real-time consumer testimonials. 
I have noted that I have about two minutes left, so I'm going to rush through a little bit now. Uh, on the next slide, I have used some testimonials of a program that I did in January. This program was meant for B school students who were trying very hard to get placed in the post COVID uh, lockdown period. When we did this program, we did it totally digitally. So we called it PREP Digital. PREP stands for Placement Readiness Enhancement Program. It ran only across eight sessions, just about three weeks. And then the testimonials that came to us, the client paid us. You know, the client was a B school. They paid us. The students didn't pay us. But the students were consumers of the experience. And I'm not going to read out these, but these are word by word verbatim reproductions of the students. Now, this kind of a testimonial matters much more or will matter much more in the times to come. I'm not going to go through all of them, but some are short, some are big ones. There are only six that I have picked from this class of 212. Uh, there were many testimonials, but these are the just a few that I wanted to pick up. And the message was, look for customer testimonials that are heartfelt. I give you an example of one from the US. These are from India. Right here, uh, though I'm in Bangalore, but I live in Noida, I service uh, you know, the markets around the NCR. So I wanted to share how testimonials can be very powerful. And since the audience is a big one of, you know, of students, 80% might be students, here is a one slide guide for your placement. Industry expectations from future managers are driven by some of these huge changes that have happened in the last few years and that are accelerating. These drive the business needs of all the companies that come to your campus. Those business needs drive marketing needs. We are talking marketing. We are not talking HR. So therefore, I have said marketing needs. We, these drive the skill sets that the future marketers will need. That impacts the campus hiring competencies. And the ones that we think are going to be of the future, uh, you will need uh, in, to have in yourself. I think one of the speakers did talk about seven of them. Uh, I have got five. Somebody will say there are only three, but broadly you will find a lot of congruence in all the speakers. People skills are going to be more important in the coming five years. Communication skills, just speaking good English is not enough. You should possibly know at least one or two more languages. It's a global world out there. Learning ability, we need you to be learning much faster than you did in college. So don't think that once you're out of college, learning can take the back seat. I'm sorry, the industry is wanting you to have huge amount of learning ability. Result orientation. Gone are the days where you will say, I worked so hard. Who cares? What did you produce? That's more important. Did you convert a contract that was getting uh, canceled into one that now is very strong and long term? That will be what people will want to see. All right, I'm done. Some randomly bright predictions with no uh, research foundation, just my own. Customers will be forgetful emperors. Is this the future in 2025? They will go from being kings to being emperors, but maybe they'll be forgetful. Their attention span will be very low. Managers of the future will be more friends and mentors. I'm just putting a question mark because I don't know the answer, but I want you as youngsters getting out of the B school to think about it. Will competition come more from within? In fact, that is happening because today, knowledge is available on the tap. There are many companies that did well and suddenly they found that a team of employees from within left to start another comp competing company which has now become much bigger so this is happening uh, commercials will be non-commercial i think so because people are sick and tired of commercially oriented uh, ad campaigns experiences i mean that trimmer example is a great one you now have a trimmer, which is a product being converted into a pay-as-you-go service or experience. So with that, I am done. Sorry if I overshot by about four or five minutes. Thank you so much. Over to the anchor. COVID has surely given us the importance of virtues like resilience and demanding of intellect and empathy. I am sure none of us ever contemplated these everyday words so much. Thank you for your stimulating address, sir. Concluding on the panel for the session, we have Mr. Manoj Thank Agarwal, sir. Thank you, sir. Concluding on the panel for the session, we have Mr. Manoj Agarwal, sir. Sir is a professional having experience of more than 15 years in the automotive domain. 
He has worked across verticals of the automotive domain, ranging from engineering, production, supply chain, B2B marketing, retail sales, and marketing. In Nissan Motors, he has worked as strategic assistant to the managing director of Nissan India, and currently he is working in corporate planning. Academically, he has done his engineering from University of Delhi, an MBA from IMT with his specialization in marketing and finance. Honored to have you with us, sir, today. Uh, thanks a lot. Am I audible? Yes, sir, you're audible. Thank you. Thanks a lot for the introduction. Uh, like the other presenters, I won't be having any presentation. And I know as a student how hard it feels to sit across the duration. And I know it's uh, the time has overshoot. So many of them might be feeling hungry and just want to get away as soon as the session gets over. So I will not be taking much of the time, but uh, sharing just a few insights from my experience and what are the challenges and opportunities we have. Like the other presenter said, the first thing I would like to quote is necessity is the mother of invention. And as Pankaj sir mentioned in the previous pre presentation, uh, that EV is going to be coming be the future of the automobile industry? Yes, it will be. But again, it is a necessity which has been imposed upon us. I remember in 2017, when we are having our annual automotive industry conference, the Honorable Minister, Mr. Nitin Gadkari, at that point of time, asked us to go for the EV. And that is the first point of time in the Indian automotive industry. Every industry after that, every company after that, started thinking of the EV. And that is the uh, only point after which uh, the EV, the company started working on the EV in the Indian market. And uh, though it will be the long journey, but yes, it is bound to come. And the other invention that has come to bound to come in the automotive industry is about the uh, fuel, the ethanol based fuel. Yes, that will be coming because the high crude prices which are impacting us. So necessity is forcing us to do the invention and yes like my fellow colleague uh, said in the beginning of this we need to go for the digital marketing very true uh, the digital marketing is helping us to reach to the customer in the faster mode we are uh, reaching to the customer with the voice of customer reaching us to in the very less span of time so that we can react though physical marketing and physical tools take a very long uh, time but with the digital, we are getting, but yes, primarily in the automotive business, we need the physical interaction with the customer. But yes, again, the necessity is the mother of invention. During the COVID period, when all, uh, for the first time in the automotive industry, when the sales of the automotive industry went blank to the zero in the month of April last year, entire industry was staring blank as what to do. And then there are the many solutions which came. The launches of the automobile products did happen, which earlier the companies were thinking how to do the pro product launch in the automotive space, which involves the physical presence to show the product physically. But yes, then the inventions of the marketing teams came. We bring in the concept of shop at home. We bring in the complete digital world where the customer can see the car completely digitally, physically sitting at his home at his convenience. Yes, those were the inventions that are being done in the industry. And yes, those brings in a lot of cost saving also to the industry in terms uh, the product launch event of the automotive industry, which earlier used uh, uh, some uh, $100, million, 100 million rupees is now done in few million rupees only with the mode of digital modes. So yes, there are inventions that are being done. Uh, but coming to the key aspect, uh, the technology is going to bring in the disruption and a lot of disruption. And yes, I will say that many teams and many people might have visible, uh, visibly seen the disruptions in their lifetime. Coming to the first disruption, the major disruption that is impacting all of us today is the telecom industry. Yes, we are seeing the major disruption in that uh, with the telecom. Uh, the earlier when we uh, we were kids, maybe in the 2000s, there were a lot of landline phones and uh, the people are connected like the promotion in his previous session mentioned about the people connected at that point of time, the family is were there because when you call anyone, it is the, you don't know who will take the call at the other end and you interact with the family. Now, 
it's the individual matters that matters you call the person you want to speak and you only call speak to him so that are the changing dynamics of the industry uh, i'm sure uh, many of you might uh, not be seeing that but yes in our times if you call and speak to your friend or after marriage or something there are lot of uh, bills uh, running into thousand of rupees and uh, you get a beating for that uh, from your parents but uh, not these days for you people so these are the times which we are changing and seeing the technology and this uh, technology itself is like evolving a much at a much faster pace than we can think of and is wiping off many industry the next industry that is going to wipe off because of this technology maybe the dish industry because of the ott platforms that are coming in and changing our lifestyle and habits so with that uh, we can see the wipe off of the dish industry very soon because uh, you don't need the dish these days to watch any of the your favorite shows or movies because of the ott platform and that to uh in this ott you can watch at your luxury at your time so that is the technology which has driven and yes the same telecom industry is changing the automobile sector also uh these days the automobiles are coming as early as 2017 as the connected technology with the connected technology in the automotive domain um if you are going outside your father can track uh, you on his phone sitting with the app where you are going where you had stopped the car where you had parked the car how many duration which route you had taken uh, the company can send you the marketing reminders like the service is due for your car everything is being tracked like the other speakers mentioned about the amazon and all those tracking yes in the automotive uh, these days we can track your habits how you are driving what are your driving patterns and with those we can actually uh, help you like uh, your services do you you need to get this part repaired so that is the technology that is coming into the automotive domain and that is challenging the marketing uh, area uh, these days uh, you have the connected cars and uh, yes you need to be very that with this technology with this connected things yes we can be caught off uh if you are roaming around with your girlfriend your father can soon catch you up where you are if he has the app and he knows the technology so we need to be cautious of that as youngsters mm-hmm. the speed limits can be set remotely if you had given a car to your driver the speed limit in the car can be set remotely like and in that way the car cannot go beyond that speed limits these days in the newspaper we read lot of articles where the accidents are happening because of over speeding you can set the speed limit in your car remotely via the app yes this is the technology and this is how it is changing very fast now coming to the challenges as marketers what we are facing the marketer has the biggest challenge he has the limited amount of money he has to spend he has to decide which route of marketing he has to take if he is the luxury marketing he cannot afford to go into the uh, print media uh, the times of india or the hd he has to select the high end publications in which he has to go for the mass marketing you can go there so the marketer always has the limited resources and he has to decide whether he has to go etl whether he has to go btl for which route of marketing he has to take to reach the right target audience and the right target customer uh, of his uh, product because that will give the highest roi to him and the highest presence in the marketplace and that will generate the business returns for him otherwise uh, it will be just the wipe off of the business and the returns for him so that is the challenge the marketers are facing these days and yes we may be creeping about the whatsapp privacy policies and all that but yes that is what most companies are doing like the many speakers said about uh, our facebook ads are coming in the similar way yes the whatsapp is about to do the same that is where the marketers get the insights that is the need of the marketers to get the data so that they can do the micro marketing and the right target marketing so that we hit the right customer at the right place 
to make the impact to have the maximum roi and yes mr abhay uh, about the luxury he can very well vouch for the same about the targeted marketing for the luxury products you cannot spend the money endlessly that is the need and the challenge for the marketers uh, we need to be very cautious about uh, similarly uh, the customer life cycle is also changing a lot and it's changing at a very very fast pace and a very rapid pace earlier the customer used to own the product and use it for a longer duration of time but now the marketer has to distinguish short with the shorten lifetime between the customer and the consumer the marketer has to segregate between the customer and the consumer because these days everyone is using his individual phone which is earlier the one common phone in the entire household so we need to go to the consumer we need to dif- create the differentiation line between who is our customer and who is our consumer only then we can have the right set of target audience and to the uh, reach to the right marketer uh, right consumer unless we do that we will not be successful that is where we need to create the boundaries and define who is our customer and who is our consumer uh, these are the most important and in the automotive industry in the future if we say the disruptions in the technology that are going to come yes apart from ev we will be seeing very soon the disruptions in the way of autonomous cars the self driving cars there are technologies available wherein you just need to follow the successor you can sit in your car with your hands folded and your car can follow the following car you just need to do whenever the following car stops speeds brakes your car will do that automatically yes those technologies are available your car will do the automatic parking for yourself you just need to define the spot for you in the designated area these are the things that will define the future of automobile industry apart from the marketing things so i am open for the questions if there are any from your yes so so can i ask a question regarding the autonomous driving yeah please chirag uh, so uh, uh, it's basically the question is uh, tesla you may have heard of it the tesla company uh, it has recently in his uh, in the meeting elon musk has just said that there would be a network like uber for tesla regarding the autonomous driving where the person who buys the tesla would have the option to give it for service or say for like uber to the other person while he is working in his home or in his office for the time period say 3 to 4 hour window so sir how could uh, this would plateau the uh, car sales because if the cars are being used like uber then i don't think there would be demand for much cars in the fu- in the coming future so how would your company deal with uh, this kind of issues uh chirag for this very valid question but yes if you see the especially the indian market as compared to the matured car markets uh, uh the penetration per thousand like in the us is around 750 cars whereas in india we are at around 40 cars so we have the huge penetration scope and yes that will be the ride sharing uh, like the uber is doing so you are giving your car on a rental to charge certain fees but yes not everyone will be comfortable with that i'm not yes, sure sir. what will be the trend i will not be comfortable or you might not be the comfortable with giving your car to some other driver you don't know his driving habits or he will drive will it uh, do the damage to your car so uh, i have another question if there is a problem with it uh, yeah, i am okay actually chirag one second in respect of time unfortunately we would be having a question answer round we would be sharing oh. the email ids of all the speakers and you can uh, put up your questions there Is that okay, fine, sir? Thank Chirag? you, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. Thank you. Ma'am. Okay, thank you. Uh, sir, you can carry on, sir. Yeah. Uh, so this is all from my side. I can take a few questions uh, if the time is okay from your end. Uh, sir, uh, 
I have to announce something. So in respect of time, unfortunately, we won't be having a question answer right, uh, round right now. We would be sharing the email address of all the speakers and uh, your questions won't be unanswered. You can put up your questions there and they would be answered respectively. I hope it's fine with all the sure. participants. Uh, thank you, sir. So uh, right, you can email me and I will try to answer those as soon as possible. Sure, sure sir. sir. Thank you, sir. So rightly addressed by sir that necessity is the mother of all inventions and the impact of technological disruptions. Thank you for sharing your time and experiences with us, sir. So we'll moving, uh, move on to the next session. Am I audible and visible? Yes, you are. So what's more to marketing than the rise of digital revolutionaries? As easy as it may seem to decipher, nonetheless requires the insight which we may actively require in times to come. Moving towards our next and last technical session for the day, first up, I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome Mr. Devain Bhalla, an integrated marketer who has proven expertise and experience across media, edtech, and e-commerce in domains. So I have worked for brands like McKinsey & Company, India Mart, Amar Ujala, InfoEd, should name a few. So is a PGDM graduate, merit scholar from Indian Institute of Management, Sambalpur, and is also a BTEC graduate from Bharti Vidya Pitt College of Engineering. He is passionate about public speaking and has been a speaker at TEDx at colleges across the country. We are really honored to have you with us, sir. Sir, do we have you with us? I think there's a technical glitch, uh, so we'll just wait on for a minute. So would be joining with us in a moment. Hi team, good afternoon. Shall we start? Good afternoon, sir. Yes, sir. So I just want to check, am I... Uh, Visible and am I audible? Yes, sir. You are clearly audible and visible. Okay. Okay. So, uh, guys, first of all, good um, here on a Saturday afternoon. So, I will not be making use of a PPT. It is just going to be slightly more on the interactive front. Uh, I will be talking about a little bit about, you know, the digital revolutionaries given the technical session title. Uh, so I would appreciate if people can just unmute your, un, uh, you know, unmute themselves and, uh, I will just throw a couple of questions and, uh, we can pick it up from there. Right. So guys, how many of you are on Instagram? Assuming so that we are there on the call. So we are. Yes, sir, we are. Okay. So, uh, any, any brands that you follow or any influencers that you follow? Yes, sir. Okay, can you name a few? So, Nike, Eridas, okay. Apple, okay. many. Okay, and any influencers like, you know, Beer Bicep, yes, Gaurav Taneja, Ritu Rathi. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Digital Pratik. Yeah? Digital Pratik. Digital Pratik. Okay, so you're basically on the marketing side. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, why is it that you know you follow these particular brands or people uh, you know irrespective of the fact that you know you either want to become like them or you know it's your favorite brand that you have a bias towards them Uske ilawa, is there any other reason why you follow them sir they are very informative and they show their information with a very attractive manner so maybe because of the content i believe so okay so that's in the influencer side 
So that's for Potter. May I know your names? So Chirag. Chirag and? Harshit. Chitij. Harshit. Harshit, sir. Harshit. So Chirag and Harshit have pretty much uh, given a spot on answer. It's basically the content. Within content, what type of content that they're giving? Informational, right? Engaging. So if somebody wants to build their body, they will follow a beer biceps. If somebody wants to you know, travel to some country, they will follow Bruce passports, right? So I'm going to give you uh, a, a mirror example of a corporate brand and an influencer, basically a personal brand. Okay. Uh, this is not going to be like a lecture. There is no PPT, right? Uh, for the next 10 minutes, I would only request your attention and that's it. It's the most important currency for me as a speaker, right? So... There are two brands. Uh, if you have your mobile phones, or if you have a, a you know an iPad or a Mac or or a, or you know any laptop, just ensure that you know uh, if I'm giving you an example, do not risk logging out of the call. But uh, maybe later on, what you can do is you can look at these particular brands and see what is it that is happening in the marketing realm. Okay. So the first brand that I'm going to talk about from a corporate image perspective is Danzo. How many of you know about Dunzo? D U N Z O or Z O? Sir, it is a ride sharing app, I believe. Dunzo. Yeah, I'm sorry, I was getting a call in between, so I couldn't hear you. Are you aware of Dunzo? On Instagram, it is by the handle of Dunzo it. Dunzo underscore IT. Sir, I think it's a delivery service. Yes. How many of you follow or, you know, know about what they are doing on social media? No, sir. Okay. So this will be a discovery then. So it is actually one of the uh, most engaging brands. Like, you know, if you could just place a face on a brand, it's that vivid and that beautifully, you know, done. So it's got a very unique brand color. That is just one of the aspects, but the way it talks, the way their social media posts or their content is structured is very interactive. So if anybody can, they should definitely check out their social handles, especially on Instagram. They would come up with a range of quizzes, campaigns, anything that's got to do with, uh, they have recently done an outdoor campaign like billboards, Kahona uh, Piaz, uh, Piaz, right? Onion. So this is one of their most uh, one of the most interesting campaigns the reason is ki hum jab marketing ke bare mein baat karte right we think ki you know we can uh, we can basically you know send something out in the newspaper or you know tv pe ad chala dete hain youtube pe kuch video kar dete hain right uh, or, you know we will we'll just put a plain jane post on you know instagram or linkedin right but there are very few brands who have actually stood out from a very crowded space and why is it that you know they have managed to pull something like this which others have not right because marketing is no longer just one directional it has taken the next step which is basically you are interacting with your consumers and it's taken a step further where you're building that kind of a loyalty you're building a sense of community right so you're not just selling a product or a service you are also building a community that's why a lot of companies are hiring community managers. You can check that out as a career opportunity as well. What these managers do is they engage with thousands and lakhs and millions of people across Facebook, Insta, YouTube to the form of content, which could be uh, you know, article, it could be a video, it could be an interactive post, anything for that matter. Instagram Reels is also included in that. So these are different formats and those are the platforms. Platforms being Facebook, YouTube, Insta, Pinterest, uh, Reddit, Quora, right? So people who want to get into marketing, these are some of those aspects that you know they, you could look into while you're building yourself as a digital marketer or a digital marketer, right? And when you talk about off, you know, offline activations, it's basically newspapers, billboards, magazines, right? Which have always been there and they do a 360 degree kind of an activation. So it's also called as, as you would be studying in your MBA, or you might have, it's called Integrated Marketing Communications, also known as INC. Right? 
so uh, when i'm talking about dunzo as a brand uh, it has been able to build that kind of a community that kind of a brand loyalty now these are fancy jargon right brand loyalty is basically that aapko kabhi aage jaakar apne liye you know customers dhoondne hain theek hai to get in new customers it is always better that aapke existing customers can reach out to you right uh, and you can cross sell you can upsell you can engage you know with different products and services with them only because acquiring a new customer is obviously always going to be difficult as you know uh, retaining your existing ones right so how dunzo is doing that is one of the best campaigns that you know they have recently done within this year uh, they did a pin code kind of targeting right so if uh, anybody who stays in say uh, chandni chowk right uh, unka ek pin code hoga delhi ke hisab se 110006 to the to the danzo platform and it is emerging as one of the hot spots so what they did was within that particular locality in pune or within those pin those five or six pin codes in pune they did this uh, you know these billboard campaigns ki kaho na pyaz hai aise unhone bahut sare kiye so what that did was it is you are actually present where people are talking about you or you know your brand is actually building a presence online right so what they did was ki if i stay in baner and if i see that billboard there is a higher tendency that i would be more inclined to use that particular app right so that's how dunzo has been able to tap onto a particular emerging market segment for their platform right jitne zyada aap log aapka platform use karenge utna zyada it will be easier for them uh, and it will be easier for your, for your brand also because it will stand out from all of its competitors right so that's where you're building the marketing experience and when those same people will see you on your social will see your social handles they'll see uh, what are the things that you know you should not be talking to a feminist it's one of the recent post right then kahona pyaza is already there then uh, you know for women's day that is coming up they have come up with this fantastic jingle right so it's uh, two days from now so they have already started their campaign online right and all their you can pick any of their you know uh, social media posts you will find that there is a sense of consistency and a sense of quirkiness if i have to use one word for dunzo it is quirky not many brands have the guts or they have the bandwidth to take their social media handle to another level altogether right so check out dunzo d u n z o i am not promoting them they have not given me money to promote their brand i am uh, somebody who's who belongs to an experimentative kind of a marketing mindset and that's how you know dunzo is a stand out for me right so if you know it's just uh, my suggestion to you whenever you appear for your interviews do not take names of brands which are already famous talk about something that builds a conversation with your interviewer and, hi- and a hiring manager right so i recently interviewed and uh, my to be manager uh, if i join that organization they have pretty much been on we we were pretty much on the same page we felt that you know that particular brand is very under under the radar of so many social media people right because uh, everybody talks about uh, a well known brand like a levi strauss right or they would talk about a puma or you know nike uh, but they won't talk about platforms like a delivery service right even so matter for that matter is the second brand which has been doing this consistently over a period of time their billboards were they use some obscenities in that just to get attention of people right so uh, that was one that was one of those campaigns and their social media manager has suddenly become uh, you know emerges one of the influencers on linkedin right akshar pathak i believe so uh, he has a huge fan following because of his creative mindset the way he approaches a business problem 
and how he translates it onto a social media platform right now so there are two examples for you zomato and uh, danzo from you know the e-commerce space and then obviously you would find uh, a lot of digital influencers who just popped up so uh, any one of you follows uh, mr gaur gopal das or uh, bmi yes, right so you do that so here's the next question uh, what stood out to you like is there any post that you know really stood out so actually the the two influencers that you were talking about they both have a youtube channel so from that yes, i was hitched to them so from that from there i connected with them and then i followed them okay so um, are you are you basically into motivation are you into self help no sir uh, just while i was just uh, searching for that some some kind of videos regarding the fitness stuff uh, there i found peer biceps hmm okay so, so that's uh, uh, basically the the plus point when we talk about any influencer in the digital ages you are searching for something and there is a higher likelihood that you will encounter some of their content either on google right or on insta or on youtube or maybe a pinterest any any uh, any of the platforms which you are exposed to and you are frequenting as well right so that is where the uh, digital revolution when it comes to personal branding has been on the rise right so whenever you are talking about any piece of content right marketing without content does not exist now what is content content is basically anything that you consume it could be a blog it could be a video it could be a reel it could be a snippet it could be an infographic it could be you know a, a, you know an article in the newspaper or you know a sitcom on netflix this is these are all different forms of content audio video right uh, anything or any uh, like a static image like a visual right like an image so when we talk about a personal brand a lot of corporate brands right so i'll give you a very uh, it's one of the recent campaigns that you might even see in your today's newspaper it's by safi safi hamdard ki safi basically it's a blood purifier so they have done this campaign like a few months back where they brought in a lot of uh, you know micro influencers and mini celebs uh, from different domains it could be you know a para- paralympic uh, paralympian athlete a cricketer uh, a female influencer right people from all walks of life and the campaign's name is hashtag #sachai andar achhai bahar right so what they are trying to do is they are bringing in unconventional influencers to drive home a point that you know there is beauty in all aspects right it's basically loosely i'm talking about that because whenever we talk about any content or any thing that will get picked up by a media by a media house or would get a pr mention is something that is strikingly out of the box right it's a cliche term but when i whenever i say out of the box it's basically got to do with the fact that aap wo nahi bol rahe jo puri duniya bol rahi right aapki aap mein aisi kya baat hai jo dusre ke andar nahi hai aur how will you position yourself even when i do a lot of these workshops with different colleges this is a very important concept everybody has a two a one page or a two page resume right depending upon the college that you are in uh or even later on uh, during the line uh, but everybody might look similar right how is it that you in a crowd of samsung how will you become the apple if i have to put it across in that manner i'm not an apple fan but how will you position yourself differently sab log everybody is going to get a similar great point right you know they might or might not be a part of any college society right how do you position yourself differently a 90% or uh, uh, you know uh, a 99 percentile scorer in cat right how will you position yourself differently what are the different ways through which you can do that so similarly whenever we talk about a personal brand there are people there are crores of people but you have a certain beer bicep you have a certain gorav tanija you have a certain you know gorav gopal das ji right why is it the reason is because they are talking about things which others are not similarly whenever we talk about a corporate brand 
uh, like a Safi or you know you can pick any brand for that matter, like a Zomato or a Danzo. What are they doing that others are not doing? Is what will get the attention, right? Uh, and when we talk about you know micro influencers, nano influencers, their trend is also on the rise because they have very captive communities which were not tappable previously uh, when you know these platforms were not available. Now what they are doing is they are making use of influencer marketing, you know, product placement on a on a you know a, on a sitcom on Netflix or on or on an Amazon Prime, and that's where the the entire gamut of marketing has moved online and it has obviously been increasing, right? So when I'm talking about uh, you know how do you position yourself as a, as a brand or you as a, as a personal brand, it is very critical that आप वो ही करें और उसी चीज को फॉलो करें विच यू एक्चुअली बिलीव इन रा देन बींग हॉक वॉश बिकॉज अ कस्टमर एन एच आर और हायरिंग मैनेजर कैन सी टू यू आई एम गिविंग यू एन एनोलॉजी बिटवीन हाउ यू कैन प्लेस योर सेल्फ एज अ ब्रांड एंड थिंक हाउ अ कॉपरेट ब्रांड ऑपरेट बिकॉज यू माइट बी गिवन और बी एक्सपोज टू अलॉट ऑफ केस स्टडीज यू नो डिफरेंट कॉलेज कॉम्पिटिशन वेर uh people will ask about the application and the application orientedness of your mindset to solve a business problem right you are in a b school or you know of repute and you have to follow that through so the reason why i'm saying all this is uh there is a higher likelihood that at a saturday afternoon people might be dozing off or the system might be there in front of them and they might be doing other work right so it is critical that whenever we approach something always question the why and the how the how can be sorted later but why are you doing it is most important okay that's the reason why there is no ppt today and i wanted to have a direct conversational kind of an interaction with you so that everybody understands that uh, your time is really important and when we talk about branding or marketing for that matter it's pretty much down the line but how what is your voice what is unique about you what is your usp if i have to give a jargon to it what is your unique selling proposition or unique uh, promise to the customer a prospect right that is what is revolutionizing the marketing landscape on the broader front right i can talk about the fact that you know a brand is supposed to be authentic they are supposed to have a coherent voice they are supposed to be consistent they are supposed to build a sense of community right uh, and you know the brand obviously brand building obviously has to translate into sales but all that is from a more literary point of view but on the practical side of thing you have a product marketing you have a brand voice and how do you marry the two so that you know everything can get you know uh, there's a collab between what you want to sell and what the other person wants to buy people need at least seven points of activation before they can even register your brand how are they going to do it is to physical format and to digital format always remember that i am not sure how is it that you know you solve or approach a case study but whenever you do so always look at a competitor or you know do some benchmarking so that you understand how the industry is like and this will be very hands on if you have to appear for your interviews for your summers or for your final placements right so uh, let's have a quick q and a if there is any so thank you so much uh, for pointing out the nuances of the social media that we pro- probably might miss and thank you so much for your time and efforts so moving on to our next speaker in the panel i would like to m- welcome mr n s Sundra- sundaram sir highly reputed and experienced personnel with an experience of over three decades in sales and marketing with strong connections and in depth knowledge of the packaging industry sir has done his masters in marketing management from madurai kamrats university with an experience of over 10 years in the retail industry he has managed the entire southern region for coats viela india limited with 23 years in flexible packaging sir started his career as a regional manager for southern region in 1997 and currently he is the senior vice president in paharpur 3p private limited and managing the entire sales and marketing domestic and international business we are blessed to have you with your presence here today sir uh, thanks for the warm welcome and great introduction uh, can i have my presentation 
Just me, so. Sir, uh, you have been provided with the sharing rights. If you want to present, you can go ahead. Uh, one moment. No, it doesn't exist. Uh, am I audible and visible? Yes, sir, clearly. Hi. Uh, thanks to Dr. Ashok Sharma for connecting me for this presentation and giving him an opportunity. Uh, previous speakers have talked about a lot of technology. Dr. Sujai talked about what is cloud, what is mobile. And Mr. Pangaj has talked about basics of marketing. And everybody, previous speakers have covered most of the part. I will just uh, start with the basics of what is what Philip Kotler had talked about marketing. The science and art of exploring and creating, delivering values satisfy the needs of a target market at a profit. We, talk, we are talking about the digital revolutionary, which is the team has been given to me as delivering more than marketing and rise of digital revolutionary. I'll just give you, we are all talking about mobile, cloud, many parameters. I'm from the flexible packaging industry. How flexible packaging industry is related to the digital marketing? How are we, the digitalization is helping the flexible packaging industry. We only use the handphone, mobiles, social media, apps. People may, may not know that your kitchen is with the food products, which is having a flexible laminate, which, is, which has been done on a certain digital revolution. When you buy chips of Lay's, when you buy a Coke bottle, which has a lot of digital revolution. So I'll take you through, first I'll start with what is flexible packaging industry. Flexible packaging is industry is one of the fastest growing segments of the packaging industry. It adds a lot of value and marketability to the food and non-food product. You're all aware of that today, whatever the product which you buy, it's all been packed in a flexible packaging industry, flexible packaging material, which is very easily affordable and comfortable to the consumer. At the same time, the packaging material gives a product safe, and it is helping and identifying and describing and promoting the product of the brand. So we have different types of packaging, paper, glass, metal, and wood, and plastics. I would start talking about the plastics. Before the pandemic, the last one year, we have been going through a pandemic. Before that, plastics in industries have got a pandemic because the government regulations have started they have started talking about the single use single use plastics ban how to control using of plastics so industry have gone through a lot of things that is the one of the way that digital platform has helped how to make a laminates or any packaging material to be a sustainable i'll go through one by globally it's a just overview of global flexible packaging industry and indian pack packaging industry Globally, flexible packaging industry valued at about USD 230 billion in 2020. Indian packaging market, which was valued at about USD 75 billion in 2020, which is expected to grow about 205 billion in 
2025. People are, we are expecting the growth of CAGR as about 26%. The growth is primarily driven by a food and non-food pharmaceuticals and beverages. Food consists of about 60%, non-food is about 20%, beverages and pharmaceutical around 20%. The last one year, the pandemic has taught us a lot of things. We were all sitting at home, so we were running the plant because the time which was required for the country, we need to produce the packaging material and giving it to the FMCG companies to pack the product and service to the nation. The hand wash and sanitizers were required there were a huge requirement. People have started using a sanitizer. How did we do all those things? One, the digital has helped us a lot and the technology has helped us a lot. We moved out from the convention that one year time people cannot travel, plant has to run and lamin material has to connect the, to the market. The consumer have to buy the product. How did we do this? We are mostly dependent on FMCG sector, which is growing at about 15% CAGR in 2025, that USG of 220 billion. Flexible packaging industry is always connected to the FMCG industry. If FMCG industry is doing well, then we also can do very well. I'll just talk about the, everybody talked about the technology. I'm just taking through you how digital technology has helped the flexible packaging industry, how flexible packaging is evolving to the new technology. You're all aware that in the ancient days, people have started with the offset. Then we are moved on to the letterpress. The last three decades, there are a lot of technology changes are happening. We, there are a lot of debate that whether Gravia came first or Flexo came first, in India, predominantly, Gravier is being a Gravier printing is being used across the country. It's still today. The western part of the countries, people have moved to a Flexo. Flexo is being dominated in western part of the countries. So in India, the things have been moving for the last uh, few years. People have been moving on to the Flexo. It all. It's printing industry, we all depend on the brand, how the brand brand awareness, how the brand FMCG companies, the brand teams is looking at the printing quality and everything. They depend, but we give a technology to them. So Flexo is happening. Now the latest, everybody is talking about digital. Yes, even packaging industry moving on to the digital printing, but it is not very great. I would not say that the transition is happening not so fast because there are a lot of, we need to look at the cost and many things are there, but definitely, certainly it is moving on the right direction. I'll go through that how digital formation, digitalization is helping the printing industry because you, may, you all know only the digital is on the Paytm. We are using Paytm, Google Pay, cashless transactions, and mobile phone and e-commerce, but in day in day out, consumers are using, you're all using the product. You buy sachets, you buy uh, creams, you buy chips, you buy food product, all being produced, all have been in a printing industry. We give you a digital formation. I'll just take you through the next slide. How digitalization is helping the packaging industry? It's a, it is a very great transformation is required. Uh, today, someone who has been working on a conventional because I we print a material, we print and supply a brand. If the consumer picks up the brand, when they, when they are on the shopping and the modern trade, the pack should be very attractive. Indian consumers are very loyal to the brand. As many people have talked about, a different state will have a different uh, consumers. Yes, there are people who have been in South, they would be a different conscious on the brand. There are market like Western and East, 
would have a different brand conscious the consumers product usage is very different in south market people use a lot of gingelly oil in east is a mustard oil west is a different oil so there are many people are using a many brands in that how do we help the consumer to understand that this is a same brand one brand cannot be supplied by a one supplier there are many multiple people are supplying to a same brand in a different printing machines how do you how do you measure that there should not be a uh, there should be a standardization is required people cannot have a buy a uh, fritolase in, uh, in chennai and fritolase in delhi the pack should not be a different formation different color it should be a common it should be standard shade should be used so there digital is playing a major role on that the traditional packaging design and product launch have been upside down because of that digital formation the digital parameter digital is helping us to customize the text and design the barcode scanning which is very very important when we go and buy how how customization text and design is helping today today the uh, advertising companies art work agencies what they are doing they completely earlier i supply a material and someone would supply when they see the brand then the consumer pick up the brand there there would be a slight difference because i can't match someone's uh, printing quality because they would be having a different mix of a inks i would be using a different mix of a ink so when the brand has a problem when there are two packs are available at a different shade people are having a lot of problem so that is that's the way the artwork companies have started digitalizing their process how they have started when they started looking at our printing machineries they have started analyzing that how that my machine is working how other machine is working the artworks have been getting released based on the finger printing how my machine is working based on that they given a artwork to me and give it to a other person so when we print the job when you see it in the market as a consumer you will not find any difference it would be very similar there the digitalization is playing a major role of standardizing the shade between the two companies between the two suppliers so the brand can feel that yes my brand is available at the same shade at from kanyakumari to jammu kashmir that's the way there's a digitalization is happening today we all walk into a modern trade people just walk in people don't look at that they do a scanning of barcode and billing can happen you can walk away from this modern trade how this is the this is a one of the digital transformation otherwise those days people have to look at the mrp and doing a punching it on the computer this is this is not required this is barcode scanning is not only at the modern trade or any retail shop it is across the manufacturing units barcode scanning is helping to control the inventory of checking the availability of the raw material and finished goods also these are the three parameters on that i'll just give you a what is printing advancement of printing technology in digital printing today by you buy coke about a year back coke had launched the brand with the the first time they have done a printing with the digital printing uh the tip i can go and buy when i buy a coke i just go and buy a coke that time they 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 have done that i can buy a coke for my mom that ma is printed in that when i go to my brother's house i can buy a coke for bro then they connect to the the this this is the printing industry is connect to the emotions and connect to the consumer when i it's not that when i go with the coke bottle to my house my parents house and go and give it to my mom ma'am this is a coke this has been printed so these are all ha will happen when because digital can play a role on utilize it in a different place but flexible packaging industry it's helping to connect to the consumer uh so jay had talked about crm uh see he gave a good he is from microsoft and he had given a how crm is working 
uh, yes, CRM plays a major role on business, both nurturing and the customer retention. It is helping ideally to grow and evolve, evolve as your business grows. In today's world, Salesforce and SAP, these are the two main CRM used by a number of business. The last one year during the pandemic, most of the company, everybody was working from home. During the last one year across the country, there are 300, I would say that about 1,000 brands have got launched in, particularly for sanitizer. How this entire launch has happened, it would have not been possible if digital is not there in the system. How this has happened, I'll just give you an example on that. We are running short of time, I would not take much time. Uh, the moment lockdown has started, the awareness was created. People have started using the hand washers and sanitizer and across the country. There is a shoes demand. People were sitting at home. The, everybody started, modern rest, restaurants are closed. The consumption, food consumption have got, gone up. So sanitizer was available with a very few country, few, uh, few companies in the uh, whole. Everybody wants to come in sanitizer because there is an opportunity. There are certain categories are not doing well. There are certain categories are doing well in the country, which every company was trying to utilize the opportunity. Many launches we have done. How did we do? Normally, when the brand sends the artwork to us, normally we take a printout on the paper proof and courier it to the brand. The brand approve it and then uh, we will just print it and supply to them. This time, they cannot travel. So what we did, they gave an artwork. We made the proofs, and we had given we had given it to them on online. There are times that on the press, people have done the online approval. That's the way so many brands have been launched. These are the there are certain tools like SAP. Uh, we were not able to control the inventory because our plant was running at a full, full capacity that we connected to our customers. They have, we have been allowed them to access our ERP tool. They understand that what is the schedule, when the material can leave. That way CRM has helped a lot during the lockdown time to understand both. We can understand the customer requirement, customer can understand our process and it helped us a lot. At the same time, CRM is provide a complete lifestyle, life cycle history of their customer base. We can understand what would be the customer. So after 10, 15 years or 20 years, someone wants to know what, what exactly happened during the pandemic time. The packaging industries have grown around 40% and 45% in during the pandemic time. So after 15 years or 20 years, somebody comes and sits and understands that how did we do in 2020 so much of sale in flexible packaging industry. So they can take out the data, which are the categories have gone, which are the category did well and which are the category did not do well also. The same time CRM will enhance the team productivity, make the team efficiently and improving the business rather than concentrating on the administrative work. CRM will definitely will help companies to build consumer centric business model and the one e-commerce, I would not talk much about it because previous speakers have covered. Uh, e-commerce is the one which is a one of the distribution channel. As uh, I think Mr. Gupta or somebody had mentioned about Big Basket. I would say that uh, since we are supplying, we are we are partnered with the, all the retail industries, Reliance and Big Basket, you name it, any companies. I would say that the, all these. People have grown almost uh, last year about 30% over the last year. Uh, it's going to be a long term that e commerce, we, we developed a lot of products during the lockdown time. Uh, the consumers' demands were very high because people have stopped buying a single sachets or single 100 grams and two day. People have started buying 2 kg and 3 kg. We have this during the, during the plan, lockdown time with the help of understanding the design from the brand agency and develop the packs for e-commerce. 
and today it is available. People can buy a five five liters of jar in one bag. So that's why e-commerce we designed a different marketing strategy and we developed a different product for e-commerce. So what is the impact of the digitalization? We all talked about many things about how digitalization, how the revolution is happening, how the transformation is happening. How, uh, how it is helping the, what is the impact of the digitalization to the consumer? Definitely digital technology has changed the game. Even the customers have changed the rules. Customers demand is very simple and seamless and they, they, they have got a personalized experience on particularly for the digitalization across any channel, anytime, anywhere on, on any advice. Workforce engagement. The world is getting smarter in the digital economy, but complexity is overwhelming the workforce in this pursuit. I'll just give you about marketing tools. Uh, we talked about uh, automation. So we all talk about automation in a, the common forum that where it is, you may not aware of that, how automation is happening in the manufacturing industry. There are many companies, you go to, you go to the Mercedes car, cars and how there are automation is helping. We are talking about the industry, which is, a, which is a growing industry in the country, which is serving to the nation for the people, to the food industry and giving a great protection to the product because India, across the globe, around 20, 30% of food is getting wasted on a, every day. So these are, we are the people who have been using the material and protecting the product for that. So how automation is helping to our industry? For an example, printing industry, printing is the major area where the people, today we are all talking about plastics is getting banned, 12 in should not be used in the yings. There are a lot of sustainability, environment protection we are talking about. We are, the government is bringing a lot of regulations that we are also trying to change. How do we do that? That way automation is helping. Today, the, the many places that there are a lot of wastages, which is environmentally not great, only is using a ink and solvents using. So automation today, then there are many things are available. We have got a printing press, he fixed the certain digital one, which is helping to control the wastages of the entire raw material and usage of ink. So, so we have started the last couple of years, we have been started, it is not only a data collection, it is giving a control that where the, what is the machine downtime? Suppose I use a machine for one and a half hours downtime, which is helping us to bring it to 40 minutes, so the automation is helping in every process. It is standardized uh, procurement of standard of goods and production data collection, invoicing. So the government has introduced the e-invoicing. E e so we don't send any physical invoices to any of our customers, which is all we are doing in e-invoicing. So when whatever it, the customer can, uh, sub, customers gets a benefit out of that. So digital process have access to real-time analytics, to support and rule-based decision-making. Search engine optimization, everybody was aware of that, how Google is working on that. These are the two strategies, all, all students must be reading a management book. They know what is red ocean strategy and blue ocean strategy. I just want to highlight it that the students are the younger generation. We all came from the conventional marketing. We go and sell the product in the market and created the brand. Today, digital is helping to create the brand. It is not required someone to go and meet the customer to talk about the brand. Those days, 30 years back, we used to go and spend each and every customer and talk about it, continuously talk 10 days, then only the customer will understand the brand. Today, the digital is helping to, to connect with the customer. When PepsiCo and Coca-Cola, they have the same product that all quality and taste and similarities are there. They, they go to 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 in terms of prices, branding and other stuff. This is called the red ocean strategy. Blue ocean is the different. Apple is also a smartphone. Even Samsung is also a smartphone, but their interface, Apple interfaces IO is completely different from their competitors. If 
still they are in the consumer electronic business, but they have a business strategy is very different. I would like to conclude my presentation with the, the team which has been given to me, the rise of digital revolutionary. I would like to add that digital is, what is sustainability? Today we are all talking about sustainability. It is not to sustain in the business. One is that you need to sustain in the business. You need to add a lot of technology. Today, the requirement of the market is very different. We need to look at it that what will happen in the five years time. Today, today because of certain uncertainty in the market, people may think that whether that this investment will help or not help. But we can tell you that you need to look at it in the long term next five years time that how business is going to be there. Whatever you produce, whatever you manufacture, it should be environment. Digital is helping a lot in environmentally because the moment you go for a printing industry, you use a digital printing. There are no solvents are involved. There are no wastages. It helps to reduce the carbon footprint in the industry. Then response to the market is faster. It is a less of manual intervention. We all talk about the brand loyalty and customer loyalty. Definitely digital will help us to increase the customer loyalty and with the frequent communication. That's all my, from my side. Thank you for the opportunity. Thanks to Mr. Ashok Sharma. Thank you. Thanks to the manager. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, we have been more clear about the theoretical concepts now because we know the practical implications. So thanks to you. Moving further, we gladly welcome Mr. Shivendra Mishra, sir, Director at Oat Consultants and with expertise in advising clients on business strategy, business development, digital marketing. So is a part of the core committee management team at Reliance Industries, worked with you. Geo Devices team to set up robust internal tracking and reporting processes and formulated strategy for device ecosystems. Founder of Viola E-Commerce Services Limited, strategy director on digital marketing and services, startup with Markjack, India's biggest B2B e-commerce platform for small and medium enterprises. So is a mentor to a couple of startups in remote services and dairy business. He is also a mentor at Accenture, world's biggest electronic retailer to implement and maintain a multi-channel e-commerce deployment integrated with SAP across several geographies, including China, Turkey, UK, and Mexico. Sir has implemented hospital information solutions for India's biggest healthcare provider solutions across several hospitals. As COO of Cypher.com Private Limited, he was responsible for building the organization in all its facets from initial size of 10 to 100. He set up and ran an offshore development center for a gaming company too. Former part of Tata Administrative Services, he took forward to, we look forward to your words of value. Please, sir, over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, again, the usual, am I able to share my screen? Just a minute. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, hopefully, behind all this, Pari Hore hai. Samaj rahe aap log? So, welcome to the digital gorilla world. And I think all of this started with, uh, with Kolavari D way back, I don't know, 10 years back. And then we are having the Pari after that. So, hopefully, there was nobody named Shweta on the, on the call. But all of you understand, I think more than me, you all today know what guerrilla marketing is because we come from a background where things were stabler, where things were simpler. You all, you all are getting into an environment where things are chaotic, where things are very different. So here is the flow of my presentation. And as you can see, it is structured beautifully from one point to another point. It has a clear guideline, a clear starting point and a clear ending point. I hope you get the sarcasm. So embracing ambiguity. First and most important thing at this point of time, the marketing that we are talking about, 
So whoever is talking today, everything is relevant and everything is irrelevant. So you are a generation which will build its own rules. You are a generation which in the pace of change has increased so much that anything that we say or our generation says may not be relevant by the time you start operating. So therefore, what does it mean? Does it mean that you have to ignore everything? No, you don't have to ignore everything. You have to absorb a lot of things, but based on the situation, you have to develop that instinct to do the right thing. Now that development of instinct is not something that comes by sleeping, it comes by absorbing. So instinct is, a, is an outcome of a lot of conditioning. So therefore there is a lot of hard work, but just like you know a great Olympic badminton player, or, uh, or a swimmer, that day he gets, he gives the perfect timing. So he might've practiced for years, but he practiced to hone your skill on that particular day. So similarly in the environment that we are looking, all of you know the trends. So a lot of speakers have come before me, everybody of you possibly have known the trends, but what is the art? The art is defining the inflection point. The inflection point is the point when things will change that is the point you can so for example solar 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 was there for 1974 the the theory behind artificial intelligence was there from 1980s but when did the exact inflection point come so basically we all know a lot of things but when will the water start boiling when will the stock market it's supposed to rise we are in a bullish market but when will it actually rise so ultimately that's the art and skill that you have to do and be prepared for the ambiguity. So marketing in this context that we are talking is that there are not going to be set rules. That's what exactly gorilla is all about. When you are in a gorilla warfare, there are no rules and you will have to embrace the ambiguity. You will have to think on your feet. Now, while you are, while you are thinking and doing all this, the greatest thing that will happen to you is you will always see contradictory forces. There's nothing that will, it will never be black and white. It will always be gray. So for example, look at the internet connection. Internet connection gives us a huge reach and it's creating personal isolation. Social friends comes with unsocial trolling. So all of us today have avatar kind of uh, social logins, which we use exclusively for trolling. And our good avatar, where we are the student and whatever, is specifically used for all of our resumes. So we have social friends and we have a social trolling. Targeting of one. So obviously everybody is talking that, you know, there will be a point of time where the micro segmentation, we will, you know, build the car for you, we'll build the packaging for you, we'll build the software for you. But at the same time, you have the entire movement of breach of privacy, where, you know, people are saying that, I do not want to be known. So today you must be hearing about flocks and fledges in Google, where they are talking of a cohort, where there will be cohorts of similar, what is called psychological profiling, but you will never come to know exactly who is behind it. What I'm talking about is contradictory forces. There is a viral marketing. Obviously all of us know what viral marketing is. And then there's a brand boycott that suddenly you do something wrong and yes, there's a whole call of brand boycott. So all of us are clued onto the Twitter, all of you are clued onto the Instagram, and all of you know all about this. But what I'm trying to say is, know about ambiguity, ambiguity know about balancing forces, and then frantic pace of change. Things are just changing whether you want it or not. Yes, you had a transport vehicle, you were sending letters. Many of you would have heard of your parents telling how they used to write their love letter to their mom and it used to take two and a half months for her to respond. And then you had the email, which was definitely wireline computer. And now you have messaging, mobile, 5G. You are kind of instantaneously getting a reaction. Your attention span has gone to 140 characters. You cannot read a whole page of a book. Uh, writing three pages is just cut and paste. So this is the reality of the world. You know, we all can kind of uh, keep fibbing each other, but that's exactly the thing because you are living in an information overload. Information is hitting you. Just think about it, that in 10 years from now, 
on YouTube, there will be a video available for everything of the entire world of all the places on the YouTube and Google Maps. You need not visit anything. There will be no scenario that you will not have seen. Uh, possibly there will be a hologram or virtual reality sets. You would, there will be no difference, I can tell, whether you have really gone to Antarctica or you have not gone to Antarctica. Because like you and me, we see one Discovery Channel uh, episode and we are able to talk knowledgeably about something so well, which, uh, which people are amazed. All I am is a great Discovery Channel expert. So all of us are becoming armchair experts. In this context, just keep these points when we are thinking how the marketing of today will evolve. Now I just want to bring to you is how, does this, how has this come? Look at the digital waves. It started with hardware, IBM, Apple way back then there was the OS software, then the internet happened, then the e-commerce happened, then the social Facebook happened, the Bitcoin has happened, the artificial intelligence has happened. We moved from desktop, laptop, mobile, embedded systems, and then we are talking of brain machine interface. You must have heard Elon Musk's Neuralink company, where we are talking of silicon neurons, which can be embedded into your brains. So, so the world is moving at a pace where where all we can do is keep our balance. There is no prediction anymore. There are general trends. Yes, digitization will increase, technology will increase, everything will increase. But ultimately, what will work? What will work is ultimately the instinct that you have built by, by bringing all this knowledge together and being able to think on the feet. And that's very, and when you're able to think on a feet, it's again, I'm going back to the Olympic athlete. You must have done your swimming so many times that that day when you jump onto the swimming pool, you set up a world record. So it's more about training the subconscious rather than knowing one thing and about. You have to be comfortable with technology. So now where does this leading to? So what would be the future tomorrow? So I am trying to take you away from marketing and say that, you know, the disruption will come from very broad context. The broad context is what is going to happen next five years. This October, James Webb Space Telescope is getting going to get launched. This is a two year delayed project. But if you know that the greatest invention of the mankind was the Hubble Telescope. If you all have not been following the Hubble Telescope, that was launched in 1991, it did not work. And that to set up a doctor surgeon to get it right. So things, and that, actually changed the way we viewed the world. So a lot of pure science that we read our, let's say 20 years, 25 years back is very different for the pure science that you guys are reading or people who are going to read 10 years from hence. And James Webb telescope is further going to fundamentally change what our, what our thinking about the universe is. And similarly, a Nancy Roman space telescope, why I'm bringing you to abstract things is because in the background, these are the fundamental changes that change the way that we think. You must have heard about large, uh, large Hadron Collider at CERN in the Geneva context. You might have seen, seen the God particle, the Higgs boson particle, a couple of four or five years back. That was the news. The next generation version of the Large Hadron Collider is ready, and that will go online in 2024. So things fundamentally move from science. So please, believe, please, while, you know, a lot of things will happen on Twitter every day, the fundamental shifts of what you see as internet, what you see as Twitter are an outcome of a pure science. In applied sciences, things will move in clean technology, hydrogen as a fuel, harnessing fusion reaction, uh, quantum computation. Quantum computation is something that's going to change everybody's of our life. The computers that we use today are not the computers that you'll use tomorrow. Clean energy will fundamentally change. Just imagine, all of you know about fusion reaction. So if fusion was available, literally you would have endless source of energy. A lot of constraints that you see today around is because there is a limited amount of energy. There will be a clean energy and there will be endless possibilities. And obviously Project Artemis, the, moon, the NASA's uh, NASA's project to the moon and Elon Musk, his mission to Mars. So these are the new frontier disruptive horizons. Please keep them because these are the things you are sure about. What will happen in smaller amount of time? I think a lot of you already know. You already know that digital marketing will increase. You all know influencer marketing will increase. So I'm talking about at this point of time, some 
a lot of further things because actually these are the only things that you can predict. What you cannot predict is, you know, as I say, it's easier to control the rover on the Mars, but it's difficult to predict the weather at Delhi. So things, you know that what is going to happen in a longer future. Today, you have to step back and therefore, what does it mean to your journey? Your journey is your business environment is going to be chaos. Whatever I'm going to tell you today or whatever speakers are going to tell you are just trailer, picture abhi baki hai. Because you will have to be multi-skilling. And I definitely say there'll be end of business functions. Business functions like the marketing, the HR. So you already see, Look at the entire rise of Google. Was Google a marketing company? But it built what marketing is all about. It redefined marketing. The founders of Facebook, were they marketing guys? No, they were not marketing guys. So ultimately, yes, marketing principles will, re will remain the same. But the environment in which they are going to operate are going to fundamentally change. So what you have to do is do two things. Understand the principles of marketing, but understand that the fundamental environment in which that marketing will operate is very different. So if you are marketing from IBM today, and if you are marketing from Dunzo today, there are very different ways. So it depends on the life cycle of the product, the kind of marketing that, uh, that would suit them. So if IBM went into trying to do quirky marketing, maybe it will work, I should not pass a judgment on it, but Dunzo has possibly no option but to do kind of quirky marketing. You catch the attention. At a personal basis, what does it all move to? From the chaos, you will have to learn yoga. Please don't take this as a joke, but yoga in some form, in terms of mindfulness, you will have to learn to slow down. You will have to learn to stay unemployed. You'll have to learn that you will get projects. You will learn that you know projects will fail, projects will end, and there will be white spaces in your life. We, our generation had been, possibly came from, from a generation which had worked, whose parents had worked in public sector. We basically thought, you know, we need careers. They are not going to be careers. They are going to be only career breaks. There will be only, so therefore, when you start thinking marketing, it's not that you will be just doing fundamentally marketing. You will have an industry orientation. You will be into electrical vehicle market. You will be possibly into space market. You will be into uh, you know, uh, other frontier markets of tomorrow or the new industries that are coming up. While therefore the traditional marketing of a lot of products and services will same. Their fundamental platforms will change. But what important thing is that you have to understand the chaos that you are getting into it and therefore start becoming comfortable with the chaos. Don't get panicky. If you don't get a job, don't get an interview, don't worry, things will come because, because everybody survives. And ultimately, if you look at the entire career graph of everybody, it's the adaptability that you need. A lot of the marketeers, if you go back to in today's, in today's kind of uh, seminar and ask a lot of the people how many of them started their career in marketing, maybe 50%, maybe 50% or not. What marketing they learned 20 years back is the same marketing today? Absolutely not. Uh, so everybody is learning, everybody is changing. And you as young people are entering an absolutely gorilla world from the day one. How can I teach you gorilla, stat gorilla strategy? You already were born in the gorilla world. So yes, while you go out fighting gorilla, understand a gorilla, also has discipline. It is not that you just, gorilla just doesn't mean disorder. It's your ability to still create a framework on that disorder. That is what is important to you. So I thought I would not take a lot of time for you. And I hopefully, if there are questions, great. If there are no questions, that too is great because I think you have had a long afternoon and uh, you must be looking after to the party time at Saturday evening. Yeah, that's it for me. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir, because we have been very intrigued about the humor and the sarcasm to learn. And so that's all on your side. So thank you so much for joining us for your time and efforts. Last but definitely not the least, we proudly welcome Mr. Ashwin Bhatia, sir. Sir is an entrepreneur, academician, consultant, and business mentor. An engineer from IIT Rookie, sir did his MBA in finance from Narsimunji, Mumbai, and marketing from Excel Arai, Jamshedpur. 
In his 23 years of experience, Sir began as a first generation entrepreneur in the aluminum manufacturing sector and diversified into various industries such as electronics, biotechnology, defense, transportation, and service sectors. Sir is among the top corporate trainers in the learning and development space and represents India in a consortium of 40 countries worldwide. Sir is also a mentor at IIM Ahmedabad with his rich experience in operations, marketing, finance, business strategy, innovations, and human resource management. He devotes any free time that he has to mentoring startups in domains ranging from dot coms to nanotechnology, education, health, and manufacturing. A trekker, athlete, and an avid cyclist, he has cycled more than 50,000 kilometers from Sipti Valley to the Himalayas to Nilgiri and South India, besides successfully completing the Ironman Triathlon. To add to the list, Sir is also a musician, plays the drum and harmonica. Really grateful to have you with us today, Sir. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I would, I would, I'm like many others, I would be loving to play the music or the harmonica right now, but I think a lot of students have been facing the music since four o'clock or uh, whatever time it is in the uh, afternoon. I think it's about nine o'clock they've been here. I won't make it uh, longer. Can I get the rights to share the screen, please? I've tried. I think I, yeah, I have it now. Great. So I won't take up much time. I'm very glad I came. Uh, I, I came immediately after Shivender, though I think Mr. Shivender's uh, talk should have been beautifully the last. It was a beautiful send off. I think all those who attended uh, the last talk should keep in mind a lot of things that he said. You are born into chaos. You're the children of chaos. We were, our parents were midnight's children. You are chaos's children. So don't worry ever about uh, things happening in your life. So I'm going to quickly get into uh, four parts. I'm just going to give you four beautiful little snippets to summarize also, bring together a lot that you've been hearing. Won't be technical, no Potter Baba, but I'm going to show you a little different perspective. I remember when I was in college, uh, my professor in MBA told us to write and make a big A3 size sheet called the newspaper 25 years from now. And we all went into uh, overdrive thinking about it, but you'll be surprised. Uh, some of those came true. We thought that there would be farmers uh, dying, though the prediction was because of water scarcity, but I think it'll take a little more. But here's the thing, you know, our ability to predict is always going to be limited only by our imagination. So my lesson from that exercise to today, when 25 years have, have passed from when I made that newspaper of 25 years from now, only maybe a fraction of what I predicted is absolutely happening in front of us today. But a lot of what is happening as uh, Shivender and others told about Google and data was not even there in our imagination. And that's what I want to gift all of you at the very beginning and probably the end of this thing is, I want all of you to develop amazing imagination. Intuition we just heard in the last speaker. It's exactly what you need. Go by intuition, have a strong imagination. You are going to be as good as your imagination, period. Not just marketing anywhere. So I'm going to focus on why, what is marketing all about? You All of you know the what is, what does the customer need? The product and the service depends on the consumer. And here's why I'm talking about what's going to happen. The product and service is always going to change with the customer's change. And I'm going to give you an insight into something that you may not have looked at for a very long time, may not even have come across that. And then I'm going to talk about the two parts of marketing, what to market, the product and the service, fair enough. How do we market? The communication will depend, of course, on technology. Technology is also shaping the first part, product and services, not going to get into it. I'm going to show you this little pendulum. I don't know if all of you or any of you have been, has seen this pendulum. You can always type yes if you have in the chat box, but it's okay. You know, every 300 years, humanity and mankind has oscillated between the left brain, right brain, left brain, right brain. All of us know the left and right brain. But have we seen, have you ever seen us move like this? If you've analyzed, what happened was the left brain is more about logic, reasoning, everything scientific, rational, uh, it should be done in the efficient most way. The right brain is all about creativity. It's all about beauty, art. Uh, let's go it together. All about emotions and feelings. 
and now you'll 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 be amazed by this the early 19 early 900 uh, this is ad in 900 ad farming and everything had just started off so people were learning to be you know what let's start farming in a very very proper way farming came up uh, many generations ago of course with those ages but the going it to the scale they started respecting this is where all those tribes started giving respect to all the elements of the world in fact we call furlong you remember i think even now if you go to the dehat and they ask kitna dur hai wo do furlong dur hai you know where the word furlong came it came from 900 where furlong was the distance that an ox could travel before it got tired that's how they would measure so they would said this is the distance an ox can tra- travel before it gets tired we'll call it one furlong that's the kind of respect we give it name respect to everything around us so we were right brain oriented and then what happens is when you are too much into right brain then the left brain start logical people start coming up why 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 we should have logic and then we we get ati uh, too much of the right brain and then we start moving towards the extreme other so by 1200 we had the middle ages the high middle ages was all about inventions and you know coming out with uh, let's do it this way let's have it in a particular logic let's have democracy and all the other stuff in a very different way and then we had the renaissance period renaissance was all about art and the sciences and about it's it's okay to spend time and money on to these lavish things in life and then the the most recent you all study in your history books 300 years later we went again back to the extreme left all about industrial revolution it does not depend on uh, whether the people are happy or not let's make them work it doesn't depend on whether it's it's good or bad let's let's ma- let's make it work it's important so and now we are moving towards 2100 god bless some of you would hopefully will live to that age that is going to be the peak next and do you not see that shift already by this whole pendulum the next shift in 2100 is going to be about emotions matter ecology matters working collaboratively matters being creative and happy do you not all desire that you are the generation that is going to take us to 2100 and this is where and this is why you are going to do why did i tell you all this i told you all this because marketing is going to have to cater to your needs your thoughts and this is where we are moving towards in the next in 1980s all of you heard the first of so the four points that i've got to share with you the first uh, 1980s ibm came up with making the computer before this you know there were main frames as big as big halls and stadiums but then it it brought it down to a small computer which you could take home and do small stuff on it just like calculating bills maybe and it became the personal computer similarly 2020s everything like marketing is going to be the communication you are going to get is going to get personal you are already seeing a lot of it happening on facebook you lot of lot already seeing a lot of it starting happening with google you talk about a vacation with your wife and on your anniversary date google will come up and tell you remember you're supposed to take your wife on a vacation and good lord thank god you get those ads but that's just the periphery that's just the tip of the iceberg you are going to get such a lot of personalization in your communication so marketing communication is going to get very personal when you take photograph just like this it will scan and tell you because of your location what is where and maybe you've texted somebody beforehand about i wish i had a a, a jalebi and you're walking down chandni chowk the jalebi wala photo comes up and you know i have to go there that's that's obviously going to happen why it's going to happen because we are into the digital revolution we are all revolutionaries today we are talking about this is only possible because of technology marrying our own tilt towards the right brain we want to be happy before we want everything else a lot of you are paying more for being happy than just for value for money that's how you're getting super bikes coming in that's how you're getting beautiful cycles coming in so first part the power of one Uh, market segments have already been broken up you remember when henry ford started making the car he said i'll make only one type of car he said you can you make it in different colors he says yes i'll make it in any any color you want as long as it's black so there was just one car for the entire world today we've got mere wala blue tumhare wala blue this steering that steering so you see target segments have come up segmentation 
Why do we have segmentation? You know, because everybody is different. Now imagine this. Imagine if everybody, every individual is a different market segment now. That is going to happen now. That is the next revolution that you're going to get. Going to be possible only because you've, as, as Shivendra said and others, you've got computers that can process that data. You have data coming in from Google and everywhere else, from everything, message that you're sending. When you sit in a plane, your entertainment will be uh, having those communication and the ads that are linked with you. It will know the, from, the, from the airline who is coming in, who is being allotted that seat. That data is already there with them. They'll start catering that. You'll probably have a menu card which is only about your croissants, not about buffets and everything else when you walk into a house. So the first one, the power of one. Each one is going to be a different market segment. Be ready for it. Be prepared to cater to that type of detail. That's the first. Marketing becomes personal. Second, uh, artificial intelligence is already here. We are already moving on. We are using AI right now to understand you. The next step is going to be using AI to manipulate you. When I say manipulate, I don't mean manipulate in a bad way. Make decisions for you. It's already happening. You're aware of it. You're seeing those ads on Facebook that you've got an inclination towards or shown interest towards, whatever. You, if you want to be a good marketer today, or in the future, take up psychology courses. My daughter is doing psychology and, uh, you know, where psychology is being used is being used by the United Nations to strike deals between companies and countries. Corporates are hiring psychologists. Uh, coming soon, marketing agencies, marketing companies are going to, marketing departments will look for psychology on your resume because they want to get into your head and find out how do I manipulate you. The psychology that we've done in consumer behavior, Gestalt and all those Freud is just baby stuff, real stuff coming up. So that's the second part. We are moving from AI towards EI. Again, using technology to cater to that shift towards the right brain happiness and data. A story is always sold. This was a story about somebody who was kidnapped and it went on for many days uh, on the newspaper in 1930s and people were interested. Nobody was going to get kidnapped, but everybody wanted to know how, what to do when I get kidnapped. That's what everybody's doing now. Nobody's getting Corona, but they've all figured out what to do if you get Corona. So content was always king, but now it's going to move more and more towards stories and experiences, your stories. You are already living out Reader's Digest on uh, adrenaline. Everything on Facebook is just your story. Everything that is selling is your story. Whether you're selling a, an apartment or whether they're selling a car, what are they selling? They're selling your dream to you. You are giving them the information they need to sell you what you need. Understand this. So again, coming back, your data is going to be the most important. Brand ambassadors are going to disappear because you no longer care whether it is Amitabh Bachchan who tells you that, uh, you know, something that this mobile is good or bad. You'll ask your friend. You'll ask Ashish, which is a good mobile, buy this. Or you'll ask one of your groups. So marketing is going to move towards group-oriented decisions rather than brand ambassadors. Think about how your budget is going to change. Also, now they will manipulate you through your peers. When they come to know you're texting or you're interacting or you're talking to your peers for a particular product, they're not just going to give you ads. They're going to give subtly ads to your peers and then they go, oh, you know what? I saw that ad. I think it's a good car. Go and buy it. And you are going to blindly, you're going to, my children, they're your age. My children are going to blindly follow even careers which their friends are. So your peers and you for your peers are what the marketing companies are going to subtly start manipulating and finding out. Okay. By the way, your data is going to sell. It is already being sold. It's going to be, there'll be a term going to come up now called ethical data mining, ethically I'm going to give, you will actually start earning from the data because that revolution will come. They need your data and you are going to revolt. You want privacy. Sooner or later, you'll realize your data is giving you what you wanted. So either you're going to be starting just open. Okay, here, take my data, give me what I want or take my data, but pay me something in return. One of those will happen. So from influencing right now, you have this term, no, you like many of you like to be called on Instagram. I am a social media influencer. Uh, okay, good. Be happy. 
another 10 years and nobody's going to ask you anything. Uh, even influencers are just brand ambassadors eventually. They know that they're being paid for it. It's the peers. It's how much control you have on the social network that you have. So moving towards manipulation. I'm not going to go through this entire little process, but all of you understand sales. Right now, we've got sales team doing sales. I was very recently called by an IT client of mine to conduct a training for them on value farming. They said, we want farmers and hunters. And I'll tell you what the background is. Companies like IT companies, they have developers who are software engineers, okay? And then they have salespeople who, are, who don't have the technical knowledge, but they are the ones who interact. So they kind of learn basic technical stuff, but they're more focused towards understanding what the need of the customer is and then telling the IT team. So they are in between. But do you know they've started realizing that they're losing out a lot of customers because the IT team could have suggested something to the salespeople, to the customer. The IT team could have actually modified with a very little effort and given the customer the product he wanted, but the sales team did not even realize that modification was possible. So they are now actually training software engineers to be the salespeople. So now teams are moving towards farming that value. See, where do you earn money from? You earn money from value. Value for the customer. It's not now left to the salesperson alone to tell the customer the value, but even the software and IT. So everybody. So they've changed the terms. They're calling the sales team as the hunters who are going and hunting and catching hold of the client. And it is the going to be then. Thank you for muting. It's then the sales team are the hunters and the IT and the software and everybody else are the farmers and together they're selling. So everybody is going to be selling and data is going to be again exchanged everywhere. So everyone is selling. And the last point, um, you've, you, if you've read uh, a lot of theories and you've come across Blue Ocean Strategy and others, you would have understood that there are these different experiences. Everything is all about experience right now. Whether it's even if it's if it's just something like buying a mobile, you want the entire experience, food, travel. And the experience comes from this element of fun. Your generation cares about fun a lot more than it cares about everything else. I know, I know we need everything else, but if it's no fun, I'm not doing it, even if it's a job, even if it's a relationship. Uh, marketers have to understand and gather and, and gather more data on what is providing more fun towards. Uh, an experience that they want. So that's the next and the last part that I had to share with you. Uh, coming, closing this together. First, the power of one, make it personal. Everything is going to, you and I are going to be individual market segments. AI towards EI, focus on psychology, collect as much data as you can on the psychological uh, processes going on in your client's mind, manipulating them, it's going to happen. Value farming, everybody sells now. Everybody is selling. So no matter what. So that also means you as a salesperson need to, uh, you're going to get competition from other fellows. Fun. You have to make it as much fun as possible. And remember what I said, we are moving towards a very happy period. We are moving towards where emotions and feelings and happiness matters. And uh, all of you are taking us there to 2100. I'm not so worried about 2025 as I close my little presentation and i wish all of you good luck blessings take us to a happy place by 2100 i am done open for questions and everybody else thank you so much sir for your time and it was really a creative session because we were not expecting something so creative in terms of the theoretical concepts thank you so much for your time and efforts now i would like to welcome dr komal khatta ma'am to deliver the vote of thanks. Thank you so much, sir. मैंने क्यों कोई तार निकाली एक मिनट बोल दो एक टेक्निकल ग्लिच वी आर एक्सपीरियंसिंग अ ग्लिच जस्ट अ मिनट 
अरे जो मैंने डन अ वेरी ग्रेसफुल एंड वॉर्म आफ्टरनून टू आवर बिलवेड एंड वैल्यूड गेस्ट वर्दी फैकल्टी मेंबर्स मैनेजमेंट कमेटी एंड माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स इट इज माई प्रिवलेज टू हैव बीन आस्क टू प्रपोज अ वोट ऑफ थैंक्स ऑन दिस अकेजन I on behalf of James Kalka ji and the entire fraternity of the institute first of all extend my most sincere thanks to the lord on behalf i extend a very hearty vote of thanks to the distinguished guests who spared their valuable time from their busy schedules to grace this occasion I thank all the speakers for gracing your crucial work and sharing with us your opinion and finding this present time. I would extend my profound gratitude to our respected Dr. Commander Satish Seth sir, advisor to the chairman for this vision and laying the foundation for the seminar. I also express my sincere thanks to our director Dr. Ashok Sharma for his moral support and guidance and to make the seminar function flawlessly. I'm happy to express vote of thanks to our dear staff members and beloved students who have made this seminar a grand success. Further a big thank you to the masters of ceremony Ms Jyoti Kokreja along with the student team Ms Reshma and Ms Harshita for their efforts during the anchoring of today. My thanks to the students technical team Sagar Isha and Karan for working on all the technical aspects with their style and own ideas. at the end i mentioned my deepest sense of gratitude and place on record my hearty thanks to all the worthy speakers today without whom the program would not have been successful and would not have been such a mega event so because of whom we made the seminar possible and made the seminar doable very very thankful to all the speakers thank you so much with this we uh, call it out for a day thank you students thank you everyone